Hey there, Dave here along with Kristen Jordan. Welcome to our special live earnings reaction video for the three of us. I think this is our single biggest investment. It's Amazon, 40 to 50% of our portfolios wrapped up in one company. And we're 10 minutes away from the markets closing and Amazon releasing their Q1 earnings. So as Amazon investors, what are we looking for in their earnings? We know that sales should be, you know, breaking all kinds of records. We know Amazon Web Services should break all time records, but how much better than expected could Amazon's results really be, especially considering the move the stock has already made? And is there any kind of bad news that they could report that would bring the stock down? Let's talk about it, guys. Options real quick before. <laughs> Before we do this, hold on. You're selling options right now? No, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Oh man, look at Amazon moving. Okay, I'll, t <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you I'll why. Up, I'll tell. I'll explain why in a second. Just. Ah. Uh, okay, hold on. This is so like. Oh, uh, so this much. Is, this is what it's like doing live. Uh, <laughs> live so internet. okay. Wait. Wait. I'm I'm buying some Amazon, some more Amazon put hedge puts. That's all hedge puts. Okay. Yeah. And I'll explain why. Remember this morning when I told you guys that I purchased 20 of the $2,300 May put options on Amazon just as a hedge to like avoid the worst case scenario on my holdings. Yep. That didn't hedge everything. It hedged, it hedged like 2,000 of my 3,000 Amazon shares. I bought another uh, five contracts, so basically another 500 Amazon shares in the money um, about an hour and a half ago. And I wanted to also, I just wanted a little more, the protection is getting so cheap right now at that $2,300 level. I only yep. had to spend 7,000 uh, bucks. I spent like $70,000 on the calls. So I just felt like I wanted to play both sides here just so I can make it. I can make it through this video with having a heart attack awaiting so earlier, these earnings. Earlier today, you or maybe yesterday, you uh, bought twenty Amazon puts at the twenty three hundred dollars today price, today. and you spent seventy thousand dollars doing that. No, 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 no. No, uh, those cost twenty three dollars a piece. So that cost forty six thousand dollars to okay. put that. There's basically a forty six thousand dollar insurance policy that would protect my Amazon below 2300 so basically my worst case on the 2000 shares i own now is like you know call it 2280 okay like i'm not going to lose more than down at 2280 levels um i just needed that for my mental sanity <laughs> today um <laughs> and then as you know i also have a, a 10 of the 2300 dollar call options like I think you have those, Dave, as I well. I have those as well, yeah. Um, so I uh, technically have 3,000 shares of Amazon, essentially, right? Um, so about, you know, call it like 5 million in, 5 million in straight up stock plus another equivalent of another 2.5 million in options. Um, I bought another five of those contracts two hours ago for seventy thousand dollars. The calls, the 2,300 the calls. calls. Okay. So now I, I have 15 I have of twenty. Those. I have the 2,400 calls. I never, I had the 23s, I rolled them to the 24s, then I just held on to those. And it looks like those are trading for $99 a piece now. I'm up $40,000 today in those calls. And then in my stock, uh, looks like that's up, uh, what, what, Amazon's up 3.7% today? Yeah, I, um, yeah, listen, I mean, listen, I want Amazon, you know what, what I want, I want Amazon to go up 100, 200, 300 points, that'd be great. But now with these put options, I would not be sad if Amazon had a significant drop. Like I don't want to drop 100. I'll get killed if it drops 100 because I'll lose, you know, I'll lose. You I don't even start making. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I need yeah. it to drop 140 points or more for me to start making money on the downside right? To make up for that. Yeah. So it, I need to and really- I know, And I know what you're thinking, because we talked about this. We we know that Amazon, unlike these other companies that have already reported earnings like Microsoft and Facebook, well, we can talk about that in a minute. We know that Amazon tends to be very quick to reset expectations, whether it's way higher expenses or major investments yeah. in future products or projects or predicting. And we were talking about this. What if, what if they just stop everything and say, you know what? We're predicting another pandemic 
three years from now, and we want to build and scale out our infrastructure so that we are ready to hand it, handle it unlike any other company in the world, and we will be the lone survivors. They we can know. do that. And well, they don't, know they're not thinking about for early... sure that their human cost is going up, right? Because they've hired, what, over 175,000 people. And we know that that right. was a $300 million expense, $400 sure. million expense. Yep. So we have, okay, we have at least 10 million long between us and Amazon, right? At least yes. 10 million, probably more. If you, if you start adding up the option value, it's probably 12 million uh, long Amazon. Yeah, but, I'm controlling, I'm controlling 2,000 shares of Amazon myself, and I know that you I'm have controlling way 30, more than I do. I'm controlling 3,500, most of that in straight up equity. So that's 5,500. Jordan, you got to have at least a few hundred, even conservative you, right? Maybe like 150. Oh, I <laughs> can't believe how small you go on this stuff. Uh, this is all we We, we lost about. Jordan. We lost him. This <laughs> is all kidding. we talk about. <laughs> I don't literally... I don't, I don't put half my portfolio and stuff. I don't. I don't do it. I, <laughs> That's what we do. I'm at. Uh, I'm at 45 percent Amazon right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, we we sleep at night. We are. Yeah. So call it like 12 million in Amazon, roughly. Okay. So, but right, we two also, minutes away. Two minutes away from earnings. We also have puts just in case it's a total catastrophe. But I don't, I don't. I'm flying do. blind. I've got only, I'm all long Amazon, zero puts. Well, the the worst case scenario today is if Amazon falls 100, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Between like 50 and $150 drop would be bad, okay? And and who knows? But other than, other than your options, Amazon's our forever stock. If it goes up 100 points, we're staying in. If it goes down 100 points, we're staying in. Is there anything that they could say on this call that would make you want to sell your Amazon shares? Well, two things. One, if if Amazon, after today, I will exit my Amazon options. Okay, that's happening, right? I'm exiting my Amazon options. So tomorrow, I will only be left with 2,000 shares of Amazon, and that's kind of my core holding of Amazon. Uh, I doubled it recently, so it's now a 2,000 share core holding. I'll have that from now on. But if Amazon goes down 300 bucks to $300, I will absolutely probably increase my Amazon position to at least 3,000 shares tomorrow. So I would buy what's likely to happen if Amazon falls, I'll buy more Amazon tomorrow. I'm not if selling it, any of my equity. Yeah. If it falls, I'm going to double my position. From 150 to 300? Yeah. To 300 shares. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cheap. <laughs> yeah. That'll put me. That'll put me at like eight. For I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot for me. Yeah. Right, if you think right. Jordan should buy more, smash the like button. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, let, you let think, us know that he needs to buy more. And if, if you, you like think, this video, smash the like button. We we need other people to find it. We actually started this earlier than we were planning to, and it looks like. 300 people have already joined us. So thank you guys for joining us earlier. We were planning to wait until just 10 minutes before the conference call started, but we wanted to actually be able to react to the actual earning numbers as they come out. They're expected after the bell. And that is any minute now. It is three o'clock. I'm going to start refreshing my browser. You guys. Oh, you're making me nervous just talking about it right now. Um, so <laughs> here's the deal. Our last earning, we did this for the first time on Tuesday, Google and yeah. I lost money. I lost uh, $60,000 on Google. I had I went short Google. Uh, you know, the thesis wasn't there. Didn't work. Um, fortunately, I covered that Google right when er right remember right when earnings came out shortly after we were waiting on that conference call. Oh, during the conference call. During the conference as call. As soon as we heard that it was a 15% drop and not like a 20 plus percent drop and when they said that it was getting slightly better in the last week, I was like that's all I need to hear covered that thank goodness because i would have lost like 150 in google on that trade but i only lost 60 yesterday i did that little surprise trade that i told you guys about going into the close i bought some call options in tesla uh not because i like tesla because i know that elon was gonna do whatever it took to pump that stock and he did pump he did I <laughs> sold it right at the open this morning. Thank right before, goodness. right before the fall. <laughs> uh, I, I was up like eighty percent in those options, seventy, eighty yeah. percent in those options. Um, yeah, I sold those. So that made up for not all of my Google loss, but a good part of it. Um, and then I course, also made a uh, options play on Tesla, and we can talk about that after we talk about Amazon. I also want to talk about Microsoft. I want to talk about Facebook. We have a lot to cover Wait, today because Dave, Facebook and Microsoft came out with earnings yesterday. 
Amazon is today. Apple is coming out today. So we have a lot to talk about. How many shares of Apple? I have 7,000 shares of Apple. I have 6,900 shares of Apple too, um, which is the most I've had or maybe ever. Ooh, I, only, I only have two. How many, how many do you have, Jordan? Is it 20, 2380? Wait, what is Amazon? Amazon. Yeah, it's, well, it's that's not. not tanking, but I mean, it's, you know, it's down. Is, are earnings out? I don't Hang know. On. I don't I see it anywhere. I haven't seen them yet. Down 100. Let me, let me pull up the real time uh, after hours chart. Uh, first for us. quarter sales, 75.5 billion. I don't know what that. So my worst case scenario is playing out. Eh, maybe not. I mean, it's kind of cruising back up. I, I, it's just going it, to it swing wild drop, for a while. Yeah. They, you know, Tesla had an immediate drop before shooting up yesterday on its earnings. Wait, yeah. 23. Now it's at 2440. So, I mean, this thing's just swinging around. Oh, I'll take that. Okay, yeah. that's great. Okay. It's swinging around. No, nothing. Uh, so, can you take him to Kate? What are you reading? Are you guys reading this? I'm trying to pull it up. What happened here? I'm looking. It's not on, it's not on their investor relations site yet. So I I'm just see a headline that says first quarter sales, 75 and a half billion. I don't get how it's not on their investor relations site. Amongst... That should be the first place that it goes. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Amazon announces first quarter results. Operating cash flow. What was the revenue? Yeah. That's all I want to know. What was the revenue? The revenue was $75.5 uh, billion. That's not as high as I wanted it to be. But you know what? That was Q1. This, how, much, they, how much was the revenue in Q1? 75. It's good. That's really good. 75 billion? Because I think the expectation on that, if I am not mistaken, was 73. <clears throat> so that would be 71, a huge miss. 71, 73. But uh, listen, what's guidance? That's all we need to know. Did they come out with guidance or are they holding that for the conference call? Hold on. I'm, sc I'm scanning right now. I'm still waiting for it. It's not on their official. Oh, it just came to their official site. So hang on. I'm going to be able to pull this up. Here is information straight from Amazon. And let me read this to you. Operating cash flow increased 16% to $39.7 billion for the trailing 12 months compared to 34.4 for the trailing 12 months ended March 31st, 2019. Cash flow increased to $24.3 billion for the trailing 12 months compared with $23.0 billion for the 12 months ending free cash flow. Let's see if we can get things that are specifically... Guidance, just scoot to the guidance. I've got, I've got guidance right here. Debt sales are expected to be between 75 and 81 billion, uh, which is 18 to 28% growth. Um, da, 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 da. Well, that's that's quarter over quarter growth, right? Or operating, is that it says uh, operating loss is expected to be between, or income or loss is between minus to plus one and a half billion. Keep All looking right. at that. I'm going to read you their statement from online shopping to AWS to Prime Video, Fire TV. The current crisis is demonstrating the adaptability and durability of Amazon's business as never before. But we've also had the hardest time we've ever faced. According to Jeff Bezos, Amazon founder and CEO, we are inspired by all of the essential workers we see doing their jobs, nurses and doctors, grocery store cashiers, police officers, and our own extraordinary frontline employees. Services we provide have never been more critical and more people doing the frontline work, our employees and the contractors throughout our supply chain are counting on us to keep them safe as they do that work. We're not going to let them down, providing customers and protecting employees at crisis uh, it continues for more months is going to take skill, humility, inter uh, invention and money. If you're a shareholder in Amazon, you may want to take a seat because we are not thinking small under normal circumstances in this coming Q2. We'd expect to make $4 billion or more in operating profit, but these aren't normal circumstances. Instead, we expect to spend the entirety of that $4 billion and perhaps a bit more on <clears throat> COVID-related expenses, getting products to customers and keeping employees safe. This includes investments in personal protective equipment, enhanced cleaning of our facilities, less efficient process paths that better allow for effective social distancing, higher wages for hourly teams, 
and hundreds of millions to develop our COVID-19 testing capabilities. There is a lot of uncertainty in this world right now, and the best investment we can make is in the safety and well-being of our hundreds of thousands of employees. I'm confident that our long-term oriented shareholders will understand and embrace our approach and that, in fact, they would expect no less. So that is the statement from Amazon right now and from Jeff. He basically came out and said, we could expect to make $4 billion. We're going to spend $4 billion, if not more. Chris, that is exactly what we were talking about. Exactly what we've been talking about. All scenario. Week. And you can see the initial reaction to that in the after hours trading. If we zoom in here, this shaded section, that's after hours, right where that steep drop happened. We had a little, we had a big drop, a little bit of an uptick, another big drop down to 2320. I'm going to continue reading this release. If you have any other information you want to share that you've seen, Jordan. Uh, no, no. Yeah, you go ahead and read. Uh, we're talking, they, they, they have a whole section about COVID. They have a whole section about what they're doing for employees, what they're doing for customers, prioritizing and stocking and delivery of essential items to ensure fastest delivery of household staples, medical supplies, and other critical products. They're acting aggressively to protect customers from bad actors who have, and they've removed a million offers from stores based on price gouging. They've suspended 10,000 selling, 10, selling accounts globally. They're supporting the White House's High Performance Computing Consortium, providing computing resources to advance research, diagnostic treatment, and vaccines. Talking about uh, AWS, lessening the impact on families, communities, and businesses. The New York City Rapid Response Coalition using the uh, conversational agent running on AWS. Los Angeles, Volunteer Surge, World Health Organization, all of these organizations using AWS and probably not paying a bill to do so. So basically everything we were concerned about happened. Uh, he essentially said he's gonna spend, bill how do you spend $4 billion in a quarter? Well, when you're Amazon, it's, it's very possible. That uh, their their revised guidance is uh, seventy five billion to eighty one billion versus seventy eight billion previously. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You're saying no, no, no. that's top line. That's their Q two revenue guidance. That doesn't make any sense. Their Q two revenue guidance is seventy eight billion. There's no way they were guiding for seventy eight for more than that prior to COVID. There's no way. There, it says they were, I believe, guiding for seventy-eight billion. That was their, oh no, that is the estimate, and yep. their revised guidance is seventy-five to eighty-one billion. Yep. And it assumed if they, they said beat on revenue seventy-five point four five billion versus a seventy-three-six-one estimate. Hmm, that doesn't sound they right. On earnings, that that is shocking to me that. They, and I, I should have taken a little more time. I, I had the numbers for this quarter. I just assumed that next quarter, Q2, they would be destroying guidance, destroying it um, based on the additional revenue they have coming in. What am I missing here? Where do you think that shortfall is? I can't wait for this conference call. We're going to have to... Uh... Hopefully, the analysts will ask the, ask the right questions this time, unlike the Google analysts that basically just gave softballs. And tell us what you think about how great you could be in the future. I'm kind of shocked. Uh, by the way, TJ Mohan, I got to address this because it's on my screen, got Chris's book, had to buy it off of Amazon. Was this a ploy all along? Because I said I was going to send him out for free. If so, well played. I'm so sorry, TJ. I No, no I haven't really left my house in six weeks. And... I can't, I, I'm just, I'm trying to get stamps.com to work right now so I can start getting these books out, but I, I'm having a little bit of an issue getting the whole system worked out with printing the labels. I have all the equipment. I'm just having issues. I will get the, for anyone that's signed up for a book, Laughing at Wall Street, I do, I have literally in my garage, 500 of them. I will get them mailed out. I just, it's going to take me some time to figure it out. I, I promise I'll get it mailed out. Um, God, I'm so deflated. I I thought they're red. I'm shocked the stock is holding up as well as it is evenly. 
uh, considering, right? I mean, it's still basically even for the day, um, considering that their revenue is not. I'm, I'm wondering if we're missing something. Oh, by the way, are we missing Apple? What the hell happened with Apple? There's nothing happening with Apple yet. They haven't released yet. Oh, now I'm worried about Apple. I have I have them on standby. <laughs> I did I do I do have forty puts in Apple just to protect about half my position. Um, again, this is so I can breathe today and not f overly freak out. Uh, I want to listen to this conference call. I just assumed. I mean, Jordan, do you think maybe they're giving out a tremendous amount of? I heard they weren't discounting AWS though. So we're yeah, they're not they're not discounting AWS. Here was my concern: is that maybe um, since all they prioritized all these um, uh, with the essential items, that maybe those aren't as profitable or they don't have as big a stick well, of price as what they, they normally sell. All the, they removed all the uh, price gouged versions, and yeah, even did, if you wanted to buy hand sanitizer and pay a hundred dollars for it, you wouldn't be you were, you're not allowed to. Did they address that in in the uh, earnings report, Dave? I am looking for that information. They did. I mean, they, they said that they closed hundreds of uh, 10,000 seller accounts were shut down. No, oh, that, that, that I don't think is meaningful. Did they really close up a hundred? They closed up one Oh one today. That must've all been the last 10 minutes when I was 30 minutes and I was trying to get my system. Set well, you up. see they, they, are coming back. So they had the big drop down and it looks like they are about halfway back from the after hours low. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what I'm missing here. Um, God, 75 billion. God, I thought, so they did just as a reference point, I want to say they did like 82 billion in the holiday season of revenue, which, you know, mm. I know it was optimistic for me to think they would, recreate the holiday season in Q1, but I thought it was doable and I thought they would do that. I thought they'd be in the 80s, um, but more than that, I thought for sure they'd be in the 80s for Q2 when we have a full COVID, of, of, excuse me, a full pandemic quarter, right? A full quarter. Do you think they are sandbagging hard this quarter on that top line revenue number? They have to be. No, I, I, th I think it probably is what it is, but the beat, I mean, the, uh, the miss on earnings is the, uh, you know, probably just because of increased cost. Yeah. Which is not a super surprise, of course. Yeah. Uh, did they get into how many, they, uh, they, they beat on revenue. So they yeah. missed on earnings and beat they, on revenue. Right. Did they, did they talk about prime, uh, how many prime members were added in the quarter? You have the, do you not have the release? Here, I'm well, going to send it to you. It's I know on the investor page. Okay. I'm it's, reading through yeah. summary reports. So I don't no one's mentioning it in summary reports. <clears throat> on. Oh, it's very top level. Okay, so the conference call will be pretty sub substantial because yeah. I don't think, let's see. US. You still look, you, you, nothing on Apple, you guys see? I don't see anything on the Prime users. I was uh, scanning for that. That's kind of shocking that they wouldn't mention anything on Prime users. Maybe a little concerning, as well. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not seeing anything for Apple either. Oh wait, no. It's a pretty robust report, and nothing on Prime number of prime users added, which is a key data point for them right now. It's honestly a little concerning that they wouldn't have that. This st so the stock is acting pretty well, I would say, considering. Yeah, I mean, so if you I think about where they were before this whole thing hit, you know, they were topping out at like, what, 20, 
150 or 2200 bucks or so and then things are slightly better than they were then uh for amazon so and they're right here in the 2300s yeah. basically 2400 right they're 2350 right now so yeah. no complaints i just i'm a little deflated because i really did expect something bigger and way bigger out of this earnings report and especially guidance into Q2. I'm just shocked. Let's see what some of our uh, subscribers have to say here. Pull some comments. But also keep looking for that Apple number. Maybe Apple will save the day Apple's, or make it worse. Uh, Apple's conference call is scheduled for 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. So that is um, just under, well, about 45 minutes away. Okay. They may not, uh, they'll definitely pre-release their press release before the earnings. So if Amazon stays- By the way, just, just a note that Visa, uh, Visa just uh, beat their uh, estimates. Interesting. Visa, yeah, mm -hmm. no, whatever. And the Q2 payment volume was up 5%. Really? Oh. So uh, Q2 payment, how is that even happening? So if Computer Amazon process thirty five billion dollars, if if, if Amazon stays where it is right now at twenty three fifty, my calls I have about seventy k in calls that were running around one. I think I averaged into them at around a hundred and fifteen. The, those are the twenty three hundreds. They'll be worth fifty. Call it sixty. They'll have a little premium. Call it. I call it. I lose half. On that so that's about 35k loss there then on the puts those insurance puts which was not that much but it was still ended up being i added another 7k that would be on top of it's about 55 so add 55k plus another 35 that's eight that's 90 so that's a ninety thousand dollar loss on the oh wait there's more than that that i'm losing though wait no Twenty, no, that's that's about right. About ninety k, I think, is my loss on, on all my options on the options that I have on Amazon. Um, right. Chris, the one place that they do report subscription uh, Amazon Prime memberships is in their subscription services, and that includes Amazon Prime memberships, and I'm guessing that's the primary driver. But it also includes audiobook, digital video, digital music, ebook, and other non-AWS subscription services. And we do see that their subscription services in Q1 um, had a 29% year-over-year growth rate. Um, mm. That doesn't mean... Q1 of 2019 had a 42% growth, growth rate, so it's down. And it it's looks down. like 29% is the lowest growth rate we've seen since Q4 of 2018. So they on, might have on their had, subscription services. They might have gotten my data didn't really show it showed this a bit. I didn't realize how big it would be. They might have gotten a lot of prime cancellations this quarter. Um which is interesting. It's not awesome. <clears throat> like I said, it this could be worse if it stays where it is. I'd like it to stay where it is and not head down another hundred points. And if it heads down another hundred, I hope it heads down two hundred. So I can make money on those puts, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is like not not the greatest outcome. So the Amazon conference call is scheduled for two thirty Pacific. The Apple conference call is scheduled for two o'clock. So we should be able to bring you some of the Apple call before we switch over to Amazon. We're still waiting for Apple to report their numbers. Uh, there, there, there's Lynn in our comments. Amazon's a major hole. There's no way they don't get through this smell like rose. Of course they'll be fine. I mean, is it, Lynn's great because he just has equity. He's not worried about it. He's just holding his equity forever like Jordan. Um, so it's fine for him. I mean, like, like I said, we, we pushed the limit a little bit with our options, Dave. Yeah. Both on the long side and then quite honestly, me on the short side too, just as insurance. And that's just going to, it's just going to cost some money. That's, that's the cost of insuring a, a very large position. Um, this middle zone is what I didn't want, and it's exactly what we got today. So Maybe yeah, the call, the call could make a difference, you know. Yeah, uh, Donald Hall, O for two, boys. You're right. This week we had kind <laughs> of our two our two calls going into this week. 
Well, you know, I hate to say that because it's not really true because the reality is Amazon's up so much this right. week. We, we, we're Amazon's talking up, what, what is it, like 30% for the year yeah. in, a, in a market where <laughs> everything else is down? No, I think I want to say, Dave, up until earnings in the last four days on Amazon, uh, I'm probably up, I don't know, 300,000 on Amazon, right? Three, 400. So, I mean, now I'm talking about a $90,000 loss, but it's, guys, don't, don't, don't shed any tears for us. We're, we're, we're just fine. Um, it just, it just, we, we're hoping for something, you know, hoping for something a little more exciting. Uh, Chris, something that is a little more exciting was your, uh, the next question there. Can you talk about Tesla? Yesterday, as the market was closing, you decided to make a bet on Tesla. Yeah, so I had I had spent uh, a lot of time the last few days. I've been I'm fascinated with Elon Musk, and I'm fascinated with him doing shady things. Um, I don't think there's really any ceiling to the level of shadiness that he will rationalize for some reason that he thinks is okay. It's okay to say this, or it's okay to do that. Um, and I just, I don't trust the guy at all. I don't trust anything that comes out of his mouth. I think he'll do whatever it takes for Tesla. He's the dream CEO. He can pump a stock like no other. Uh, he has evidently, I've you know read at least, I don't know if it's true, but the details of his performance-based compensation that he gets a billion dollars if you know the stock remains above a certain level. And certainly he's gonna do everything he can, I think, to, to, to keep it at that level. But more importantly, it looks like uh, Tesla's likely going to need to raise additional money, additional capital. And the best way to raise that additional capital is with a strong stock price. So I knew he was going to try to pump this quarter as hard as he could. There's a lot of things happening behind the scenes. It's very, very hard to prove. But one of the things that was really bothersome to me that I knew he would do stuff like this, like warranty uh, wa warranty um, reserves at Tesla. Did you guys see this? Their warranty reserves uh, went way down. For what reason would they think they could just? It's all about. It's all a, a, an income statement thing, right? It's not cash yeah. flow. They can take what they had reserved for warranty claims and dramatically reduce them, which actually props up, right? The, 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 their their profits. Uh, so there's a lot of shady things happening. I expected that was going to happen, and I went long. I already am long Tesla, but I, I bought some a, a bunch of Tesla call options. And I made back almost what I lost on uh, Google uh, two days ago. So it was a nice, it was a nice trade. I sold them this morning when Tesla was up huge. Uh, I think people started to catch wind into a lot of this stuff throughout the trading day. So uh, what, Apple still not giving us anything. Twenty five minutes later, I'm still not finding anything on Apple. Yeah. Um, guys, I have made some other trades this week, though. You want to just talk about some of these other trades I made? I'm just going to check real quick to make sure that we're not missing something. Okay. Well, let me, let me talk about my trades because I have my highest nope. conviction trade. Oh, still awaiting Apple earnings. Okay. So my highest conviction trade right now that I'm getting higher conviction on over the course of the past week is Peloton. Um, other than my core position of Amazon and Apple, which are my two biggest. Peloton's right there. It's like my biggest position long. And the they just increased the wait time on Peloton from four to seven weeks to just a few days, the last couple of days, five to eight weeks. Now, I stood on hold for about 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes today, and I spoke to a Peloton rep uh, just trying to get whatever information I could. I was like, did you, are you guys have less uh, delivery drivers now than you did last quarter? Like, what, what's the deal with the weights? And she's like, no, we have the same number of delivery drivers as we always have had, as we had last quarter. So, and, and I actually believe when you look at who is doing their delivery, I think it's like called XPO, they're a massive $6 billion logistics company. I believe that uh, Peloton probably had the ability to ramp up their delivery. So I just want to see if there are any red flags with delivery issues. And if there's not, for them to now be almost quadruple the delivery time that people are, are, are cust that's customary for Peloton. Well, look, they, it's not just XPO. They've got their own in-house delivery also. Um, and in fact, I got I was delivered by their in-house. Oh, you it were? Was, I thought it was a small percentage that did XPO or my... Am I off base here? Well, so it's kind of like the way people use AWS to supplement 
their own, you know, in-house, right? Yeah. Uh, cloud infrastructure. Yeah, I thought I thought they just used XPO basically where where in places that they don't have like an actual physical presence. Like in DFW, you've got uh, they've got like actual um, like storefronts and stuff, and so they've got a place to be and to collect inventory and things. Gotcha. Uh, but maybe if you're in like a you know middle market type place that a, that's a lot of the XPO. a lot of the buzz that i read on twitter related to peloton deliveries is citing xpo all the time so everybody hates xpo so I, like they all screw up the deliveries and it's a disaster the, the ones that are delivered by the peloton staff are always top notch. gotcha well you think you yeah. deliver enough of these at xpo yeah. that you get pretty decent at it right you would think um what's oh. apple drop dave now this is this is Apple. Their earnings are not out yet, but they are down four point six five percent in after hours. Okay, they're expected at four thirty Eastern to drop. So. Oh, so they probably drop. They probably did drop. No, we, we just, got three minutes. We got three minutes. And then three we're minutes. To... Well, hold on. Why? That's well. So it's down on on Amazon essentially. I think it's probably. down on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, Peloton right now is my lead long position it's it's the highest conviction of what i have i double down not quite double down in it but i kind of increased my position by a third today so just to kind of give you an idea of how deep i am <clears throat> on peloton uh i have about eight hundred thousand dollars of just straight up stocks it's twenty five thousand shares i also have uh ten thousand oh no excuse me take that back uh, 200 of the May 15, 30 strike price call options on Peloton. Uh, so the you know the holding there in options about seventy five thousand dollars of options right there. So it's a pretty darn significant trade for me. So I'll be looking forward to earnings on Peloton. I think they're out. Are they out next week or the week after? I think it might be next week. If not, it's definitely the week after to get some visibility into what's happening at Peloton. Uh, what is a TSLAQ? Mike at 323 says, Welp, Chris is a TL TSLAQ. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to look it up right now, Mike. See what you're calling me. Um, Peloton announces next week on the it's a loose international collective of largely anonymous short sellers, skeptics, and researchers who openly criticize Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is totally me. Here's the difference. I'm long Tesla. I guess I guess I'm a I'm a TSLAQ who actually is <laughs> smart enough not to go against Elon and Tesla. I I have made more money in Tesla the past few months as a Tesla. I'm not a Tesla hater. I I I actually totally appreciate what the company has done. They're like incredible. I have more issues with the accounting issues at Tesla and the rogue nature of the management there and how just a lot of things, right? But listen, it's working for them. I'm, I'm all about Tesla. I'm long. I still have a ton of shares long Tesla. But I, I see things how I see them, right? I don't, just because I'm long Amazon or long, long, long Tesla, I'm, I, I don't care. I'll say it how I see it, and I'll change my tune in a second, right? I mean, there's very few places where you can go and actually transparently see guys like us with big bets uh, as they're unraveling, you know, positively and negatively. If you've been with us the past seven weeks, you've seen uh, probably the best six weeks of trading I've had in 32 years. My total portfolio, my total account, it's, you know, it's up, I think, 70, 75 percent over the past seven weeks since February 20th. And that's the best seven week period in 32 years of trading. So but it, it has down points, too. Has, and certainly Google is one. This might be a tiny bump in the road here. We'll see what happens. Tom, a comment here uh, telling us what that uh, abbreviation actually stands for. It They add the Q to the end of a symbol when they go bankrupt. So thank you, Bo, for for letting us know that that's <laughs> that's where that the origin of that is. Hey, you Apple is talk shooting about your Ruth Chris trade. Wait, I want to talk about Ruth, but is Apple out, dude? App, I don't know. I don't see it, but Apple is shooting. Here we go. Earnings per share two fifty five. So that's a beat. Uh, I don't care. What's it trading at? Uh, it's trading at two ninety eight, two ninety nine. Up, 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 up. Yeah, yeah. All right, so there we go. Keep going. 
Keep going. All right. Um, cool. Let's let's keep it going. Hopefully, um, Ruth, Chris, I'm short. I'm still short. You know what else I did today, guys? I went more short on Dave and Busters. Look at okay? this apple just going up, up, up. I love it. I love it. Let's get into three hundreds, Apple. Let's do it. <laughs> um, do you see top line, Dave? And we're going to actually, uh, if you don't mind, we'll listen to what CNBC has to say about this. Oh, it's so annoying, but do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying. Sorry. Hang on. I've, I've got to figure out how to, how to hear them. So much better when they're muted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we can look at the numbers. 255 versus 226. Uh the only thing they're good at is just reading you what, you know, reading from a transcript or telling us what just happened. That's the one time I don't mind listening to them. <laughs> Here's so a headline. You... Apple boosts buyback program by 50 billion. Wow. That's... <laughs> wow. I love it, man. I absolutely... Apple, Apple boosts dividend to 82 cents. Nice. Dude, I needed, I needed that right now. I, so I just needed a win today. After Google, well, I, we got one yesterday with Tesla, but it's, I feel like we didn't air it yet yesterday. So it was just us and, you know, no one got to see the win. At least we get, at least we get a win out of Apple. That's yeah. nice. No, that's great. Um, it's not, it's not a levered position or anything, but it's, it's nice to get, you know, nice to see Apple going up. Um, maybe this helps Amazon too. Let's <laughs> see, maybe. Recover a little bit. So guys, I uh, went down deeper on my Dave and Buster's. Uh, short today. Uh, I don't still cannot see the future of Dave and Buster's where they're not bankrupt, but I could be wrong. We'll see. I mean, we get a vaccine in the fall, then I'm out of that short. All right. But if I don't get positive signs of like a vaccine or something like that in the fall, I don't know how Dave and Buster's sticks around till midsummer next year to be able to reopen back up. Uh, and so I went short more. I'll, I'll tell you exactly how short I am. I am now. Oh man. I I take it. Wait. I take it all back. I tried to go short more. Didn't go through. So twenty thousand shares short. Dave and Buster's. Uh, three hundred k. No, maybe I did short. I was a fifteen thousand shares short. Dave and Buster's. Now I'm twenty thousand shares short. And I will likely continue to deepen that trade if Dave and Buster's climbs here, um, and I don't see any reasonable, you know, reason for it to be climbing. So I'll I'll continue on with that trade. Uh, any recovery in Amazon? Let's see. Yeah, but just a few bucks. Not really. Yeah, it popped eh. up for a second. It went to twenty three. 50 for a yeah, second. Let's go back a little bit down to uh, 296. It hit 300. Uh, oh, you're talking about Apple. Apple. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Uh, this is good news for Apple, which is great because app on you know Apple's my entire Apple position is core. There's really no leverage there. So whatever I have in Apple, I was keeping. Oh yeah, Martin Muldoon 333. Hasbro surprisingly disappoint uh, disappointing. That was one of our trades that we ended up breaking even to slightly positive there, but lost a lot on earnings. I got out of that trade right at earnings. I made a dollar a share. You that. made a dollar. Yeah, I th I think I was like even to pr slightly profitable on Hasbro yeah. with where I got in, but certainly I didn't. We didn't get the earnings report we wanted, and the issue with Hasbro. Like it was our concern, right? So toy demand was way up, e-commerce way up, but with them being 80% brick and mortar, there wasn't enough of a lift in e-commerce to make up for all of the brick and mortar loss. So it wasn't totally surprising. Oh, wait, uh, Blue Apron. That was a huge win for me this week, actually. I, did I tell you guys about this win? I, 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 doubled, my, oh. I doubled my money on blue a Blue Apron uh, uh, leverage short. Uh, I had put options in Blue Apron got destroyed on earnings. It was about a $38,000 win. Uh, so that was really nice this week. That was Mr. Check Raise at 334 uh, asking me if I shorted it or would let it ride. I, 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 sh I uh, 
took profits in Blue Apron on earnings. I'm out. Oh, hey, you did that quick short on Gilead. Somebody asked about it. Uh, did you get out of that before they popped again? Um, I got out. Oh, yeah. I was out of Gilead before uh, this release that happened this week. So okay, my good. Gilead was like, I was in it for like a couple days. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm out of Gilead. That's not a short I'm in. I am still shorting. Like I said, Dave and Buster's. I'm shorting Ruth Chris. I got out of my Cisco Foods trades, uh, food short, because restaurants are opening up in areas of the country. I still don't like Cisco food, but I don't want to short them here because I think the perception on Cisco is that they're going to start to recover, even though I disagree with it. I, my, my short on uh, Cheesecake Factory is like ridiculously small, but I'm holding it. And I have another short, and this is so embarrassing, on a symbol that I don't remember what it is. It's, I'm going to look at it. It's T, TSN. What is TSN? Uh, TSN. Why would I be shorting? Oh, that, oh, I thought I got out of that short. Tyson, Tyson Foods. Oh, I. Oh, t no, no. I'm out of Cisco. I'm still on the Tyson short. That's not good. Tyson short. You actually predicted this a little before the the news media started picking up on stories about uh, meat packing plants and the problems that that are is ha are happening in some of those. But it looks like the uh, stock on Tyson has not really been affected. Yeah, I'm like even on that. And quite honestly, I, I want to be out of that short. I'll be selling that in the morning. Uh, you know, we're, we're accustomed to having like four or five tickers in our portfolio. And now I have like <clears throat> 15. It's too much to keep up with. Uh, order a computer. <laughs> Your My play puts, the expiration, la, 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 334. Uh, my Dave and Buster puts. Uh, play uh i got it it's for right after earnings so let's i'll tell you when that is my options on dave and busters expire i'm looking them up here for you buddy oh i thought you were straight short on i am but i also no i don't have a, i thought i had options too i do not have options on dave and busters i am just straight short twenty thousand shares I I think I have some options on Dave and Buster. Maybe that's what he was thinking. I have I've lost money in my Dave and Buster's options because Dave and Buster's for some reason is going up and I don't understand it. It was down. Well, yeah, what's up with that? Dave, I'll explain to you why they're going up. It's very simple. Every restaurant's going up right now because people yeah. are getting back to life and it, they're moving as a group and that these are the trades I love because Dave and Buster's moving up with the rest of them. However, they're strong and weak restaurants. I'm actually long chewies, guys. Uh long chewies uh We've been talking about this quite a bit. If there's one restaurant type or sector, and we're in the restaurant business, that it has the possibility of lasting here, it's Mexican food, um, at least in the South and in Texas, right? Chewy's is mostly in Texas. Uh, Texas want their Mexican. In fact, Chewy's revenue at the worst of this was only down 50% because their, their to-go business was up four to 500%. Um, I think Chewy's is going to be fine. I think they're going to they're going to get through this. I don't think Ruth Chris is going to get through it. I don't think Dave and Buster's is going to get through it. But time will tell. Those are my winners and losers in restaurant stocks. Uh, I'm out of all the airlines, guys. Uh, Honda D Series three uh, three thirty eight three thirty nine. Uh, American Airlines JetBlue. I'm just out of them. I not focused on airline stocks right now. Uh, I think the reason why I'm out of airlines is I actually. I uh, think they could rebound here the next 30 days. If I were going to be in an airline, it probably would be long at this moment. But I don't really know that for sure. I don't really have an edge. We don't trade unless we have an edge or unless we don't unless we unless we think we have an edge. We're not trading. Same thing with Chewy. Chewy's like the greatest company in the world to own right now. But the entire world knows how great Chewy is. You can't buy a dog. I was talking to my neighbor guys last two nights ago. Yeah. And they're trying to buy a dog, but they physically can't. They can't mm. find one. There are no dogs to buy on the market. It's like the everybody dog... was bored and they found all the like breeders and all these things, right? Everybody I know is getting a dog right now. Yeah, to get a dog. dude, dude yeah. I, guys, this was a huge miss for us. For like, We should have gotten on the Chewy bandwagon way earlier. We didn't because we were so focused on Amazon, which is fine. We destroyed it in Amazon, right? But... Uh, Chewy would have been nice too, man. And now they're up. They're, the stock's like well above all time highs. Chewy, everyone knows it. Nothing new we can bring to the table there, so we're not going to trade it. Apple um, has reported their earnings. They have record first quarter results. I can give you the uh, 
summary. And if you go to their newsroom, you can uh, pull up their actual numbers. Apple today announced financial results for its fiscal 2020 first quarter into December 28th, 2019. Wait a minute. Is this the right? Am I looking at the right release? What are you reading, Dave? No, this is old. <laughs> Dave, what are you doing? All I care about is they're up four and a half bucks. That's all I need to know. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, what are your positions on the cruise lines? John Liu, 341. What do you guys think about cruise lines? Dave, you know, cruisers are going to cruise. Cruisers that- are... Cru- no, I'm I'm kind of not into the cruisers going to cruise movement anymore. I... <laughs> I think that you saw that the uh, cruise ships, if you if you park your cruise ship and fire all your people, people uh, the stock will go up. And we saw that happen. But we'll see Dave, how long it takes for cruisers to get back to cruising. They will at some point. But Dave, don't, don't go against the cruisers, man. Cruisers are going to cruise, and I am not going to leave them. I am right there with them. I'm not selling my Royal Caribbean stock that I got. I'm not selling those calls. It's the most stupid speculative bet I got. But if we can get through this by the end of the year or early 2021, if if we get a vaccine, if and when, hopefully we will, I'll tell you, there's no industry that's coming back harder, well, maybe Vegas, uh, than cruising. Because cruisers, you can't stop them. You're never going to stop them. They're going to cruise. They're going to cruise every season and they're going to pack those ships and they're going to flock back like you've never seen people flock to to boats and water the second this is over. Same thing with Vegas, guys. I have my 4,000 shares of Wynn. I'm holding them. I don't think anything good's going to happen at Wynn the next four or five months, but I think they'll survive. And when they're done with this, people are going to pack Vegas. It's going to go through the roof. And I'm going to be out of that win position. I'll be out of my Royal Caribbean position. I don't want to own win or Royal Caribbean long term, but I think they'll both survive. Okay. So now I actually do have Apple's Q1. And the reason this is confusing is Apple's fiscal quarter is they're actually calling this the second quarter ending March 28th, 2020. So they posted a quarterly revenue of 50. $8.3 $8.3 billion. That's an increase of 1% from the year ago quarter. Quarterly earnings diluted uh, to $2.55, up 4%. International sales accounted for 62% of the quarter's revenue. And they say, despite the unprecedented global impact of the virus, we're proud to report that Apple grew for the uh, quarter, driven by all time record in service and quarterly record for wearables. Uh, that is according to Tim Cook. He says, in this difficult environment, our users are depending on Apple products in renewed ways to stay connected, <clears throat> informed, creative, and productive. We feel motivated and inspired to not only keep meeting these needs and in innovative ways, but continuing to give back to the global response from tens of millions of face masks and custom built face shields. We've sent to medical professionals around the world to tens of millions we've donated to organizations like Global Citizen and America's Food Fund. Can Tim Cook uh, teach Jeff Bezos how to do good without spending $4 billion in a quarter? You're killing me, Jeff. Yes, and where, where Amazon is spending their $4 billion, Apple's board of directors has declared the cash dividend of 82 cents per share uh, an increase of 6%. The dividend is payable on May 14th to shareholders of record as of May 11th. Board of Directors is also authorized an increase of $50 billion to the existing share repurchase program. So Uh, Apple bringing value to shareholders by increasing the dividend and buying back their shares. And Amazon is just spending all of their revenue for the entire quarter. (coughs) It's not awesome for Amazon, but whatever, man. It's what's done is done. Uh, maybe we'll get some positive notes on the Amazon conference call that will kind of save the day. For I mean, listen, we're complaining about Amazon. They're down nineteen dollars on the day. <laughs> you realize yeah. that they're down nineteen dollars on the day after we just had the most highly levered. 700 point run. I mean, I this has been a 700 point run in Amazon for me. That's where I started really loading up on Amazon was right in the 1600, 1700, like right around there. <laughs> so no complaints, but you know, you win a little, you want to win all the time. I want to win all the time, but it's just, it's, 
You can't win every single day. Uh, Amazon expanding delivery from Whole Foods stores, says Lisa Autry at 345. Um, so there, there, that, I knew that was going to mm -hmm. happen. So Lisa, uh, what, a lot of people don't realize this, that Amazon really was only offering uh, delivery from, I think it was like a third of the Whole Foods stores. Two thirds of them weren't offering uh, delivery and Amazon is ramping that up. And that is incredibly expensive to do. So I would imagine by the end of this whole thing, Amazon will be doing food delivery from every single Whole Foods. And while it kind of stinks that they have to spend $4 billion, Oh, by the way, guys, let me just tell you something right now. Jordan, I know you'll agree with me. There's no way they're spending $4 billion to, like, help the pandemic. You know, they're no, it's spending building infrastructure for, for the future. They're, they're spending $4 billion for, like, 2023, 2024 right now. These are COVID-related costs, so it could be extra cleaning of warehouses no they're not dude stuff. i have no idea no they're not it's you, what they disclosed okay so you know what let me tell you what a covid cost is expanding from one third of all whole foods to a hundred percent of whole foods for delivery distribution that's a covid cost that's a covid cost but yeah. now all of a sudden they have full exp they have distribution at every whole foods in the country which is an expensive proposition everything that amazon does right now in terms of broadening their ability to deliver and deliver quickly in theory is a is a, is a is a pandemic cost right so i know what he's doing he's just he loves he he's building an empire he's spending the money he needs to spend to kill it the next two three four years and he also wants good pr from it which let's say hey every ceo has their own way of doing this tim cook did it a different way tim cook would fly to dc and ha and get somehow get through an hour long dinner with Donald Trump. Okay. And kissing his butt the whole time. And thank you, Tim, for doing that. Right. Thank you. Because it's done well for all of us, Apple shareholders. And, you know, Jeff's not going to do, Bezos ain't going to do that. He's not going to meet with Trump. He's not going to say anything nice about Trump, but what well, he is no, going to do. They're not the most friendly. Um, no, but he's going to say, Hey, brother. Hey, we decided you, you knew this was going to happen. Oh, we're not. We can't make a profit right now. This thing, we want to take all of our profit, a hundred percent of it, and spend it on the pandemic relief, right? To do the right thing. We knew he was going to do that. That was our number one concern. So we shouldn't be surprised. Um, and honestly, even for the day or down twenty <laughs> bucks, I'll take yeah. it. I and I actually find it uh, kind of confusing that their operating income decreased in Q1 compared to Q1 of last year, $4 billion Q1 this year compared to $4.4 .4 billion last year. I would have thought their revenue would have been way up. Yeah, that that's disappointing. I think there's a red flag in there somewhere and I'm not sure what it is. That's why I want to listen to the conference call. I'm actually super excited to listen to this conference call. Dave, don't, uh, Domit at 347 says to change it to a one minute chart instead of daily and you'll get the extended hours on the chart if you do that. Thank you so much. I was trying to figure that out. That's why I took it off the screen because it was kind of worthless. But here now is the Amazon one minute extended hours chart. Is that it? Oh, okay. That's, the That's one Amazon. It's Amazon. And the, okay. the shaded portion is uh, where it is um, after hours. And actually, down. Apple doesn't look that much better. And now. if we, we pull up Apple now, it's dropped. Oh, are you going to ruin my whole night? Here's Apple. Now. Oh, it's, it's down. It's it went e up to 300 it's and even, now it's even ish. Uh, even no nah, no nah, it closed at 294 we're at 288 now it's no it's, it's from the day from the day it's fine oh from but it's fine don't freak out we're good uh, <laughs> look at these comments coming in all right uh by the way uh, have a ter terrible q2 um wait who's gonna have a terrible q2 the comment just said apple's going to have a terrible q2 did they release some guidance just now that wasn't in the initial They pulled report? their Q3 guidance. I believe they have Q2 guidance. Um, <clears throat> Apple Q2, I think, is going to be just fine. It's going to be just fine. Um, it, listen, like we said, like all the data we've actually, been running. And Apple's Qs are off. So the guidance they pulled for Q3 is actually the quarter that we're living in right now. Yeah, I think I think it will be I think it will be okay. All of our data uh, in, related to MacBooks, related to I mean, phone sales will be a little slow. 
Um, China's coming back online. That's good this quarter. Hey, they got um, an iPad sale out of you. You're right here. If I can just figure out how to use it so you guys can get better video on these things. Like my yeah, look look at how low resolution Chris is. It's that's it's really why pathetic. I, I just spent on this iPad <laughs> Pro and we can't figure out how to get it connected to our system. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh let me just see here. I, I was reading a uh oh FedEx and UPS. Long wants to know 347. Any thoughts on future FedEx and UPS? Well, we already have FedEx and UPS. It's called Amazon. That that's our trade on it. Uh, I don't really have any thoughts on FedEx and UPS. Uh, we, I don't know anything that the rest of the market doesn't know. Um, I'm starting to rethink Amazon right now. I'm really disappointed that their revenue wasn't higher uh, on guidance. Are you? Are you really rethinking Amazon? No, I'm not. I'll tell you why I'm not. I just changed my mind. I didn't again. think there was anything that would make me <laughs> want to sell my Amazon. No, I'll, I'm not selling Amazon. You know what I just realized? He's sandbagging this quarter, this next quarter, Dave. It's That's happening. He's exactly sandbagging. What's happening. I know he is. I know he, and I'll tell you why I know he is because he doesn't want to come out right now and tell the world how unbelievable this next quarter is that we're in the middle of the same way that he's telling them he's going to spend all the profits right on yeah. the pandemic relief. So I get it. I get the positioning. We shouldn't be surprised, but I also know that that top line number in Q2, you can't fool me. There's no way it's going to be, he's, going to do better than was it 77 what did he say it was going to be this quarter 77 or million seven billion 77 billion um or 75 77 billion? to 81 or something like no that no range. no he's going to clear 80 billion this quarter i will be shocked if amazon doesn't clear 80 billion this quarter and, or do considerably higher so we'll see what happens there but i'm not i'm not buying it and i think next quarter we'll get an hopefully we'll get a nice little rally based on that uh, well, we're about eight minutes away from the Apple earnings call, so I'm trying to make sure we have audio ready to go for that, and then we will also bring you the Amazon earnings call and our our live commentary, the best part of this channel. So CS at 353, what happens when the Postal Service raises their rates on pa packages shipped by Amazon? You know Trump is pushing. All right, not a concern. Let me explain this to you all. Um, one, Amazon saw this coming two years ago, has been preparing for it. By the way, part of that $4 billion is additional delivery, additional personnel. We call it last mile delivery, right? Um, Amazon will be totally fine <clears throat> and have a tremendous amount of negotiating leverage with the post office. The post office actually can't afford to lose Amazon. And so they don't have leverage. Uh, Amazon actually, as their largest client, actually has the leverage with the post office. And even in a worst case scenario, Amazon would be, I think, would be totally fine because they are building out such massive last mile delivery now that they're becoming less and less reliant on the postal office. That's part of the issue the postal office is having is that they created that whole stir where Trump did. The post office, when Trump created that stir, remember this? They're like, D please don't say, just stop, stop. We're good with our Amazon. They love the Amazon relationship. That's what most people don't realize. They love it. They want it. Um <clears throat> Anyway, yeah, Chris Erickson, like I said, they only do last mile, and Amazon's doing last mile now themselves. So they're they're not going to need the post office in a few years. Yeah, most of my deliveries are a uniformed Amazon employee. Yeah, I mean, I get like nine to 12 deliveries a day from Amazon in my house. And I, would say, I would say almost all of them are for Amazon, me, some week. are UPS, <laughs> and a few FedEx. Uh. By the way, I am getting that. Speaking of Apple, oh, are we on here? We have I'm, music, but I get, I'm getting my magic keyboard today. That new keyboard for the iPad, and I cannot yeah. wait to try it out. Uh, I still need to figure out how to use it for these shows. <laughs> um, so I sent you a link on Amazon to a tripod adapter that will let you uh, attach the iPad to a tripod. So that's hopefully. Hopefully the next time you guys see us, it will be slightly higher resolution for Chris. We need to figure out how to get the the, the camera to work with our software though. Um, by the way, someone just asked about our, uh, oh, Newell Brands is tomorrow. Corey Schottestein at 352. Newell Brands, uh, we used to trade them all the time. I have no idea what's gonna happen with that one, I'm out. They're all about small appliances and we had a whole show talking about small appliance demand being through the roof. 
but the same way toy demand was through the roof this quarter, didn't really matter as much for Hasbro because 80% of their distribution was brick and mortar. Similar thing for Newell Brands. Newell Brands, most of their distribution is brick and mortar at places like Macy's. You know, you're walking through the home section, they have all that junk and toaster ovens. Well, that's the issue for Newell Brands. So I'm staying away. Small appliance demand is up, but small appliance distribution is down. So that's something you have to really think about. There's a positive and a negative. I can't figure it out, so I'm staying out. Uh, I'm still long Ford, Truth Austin at 352. Uh, you guys still long Ford with me, or are you giving up on me in Ford? Oh, I am not long Ford. Yeah, I not, didn't do your trade, but I oh. did do the trade that um, I talked about on that show, the alternate version of the way I'm going to get my free Ford Bronco is I was going to do uh, some put selling on uh, Ford, <clears throat> Ford puts, yeah. but instead I did it with Tesla and I made 30, uh, my target was making $38,000 and I did. Did you do it? Easy peasy. I did it. I did it. <laughs> awesome. So all I had to do was sell, uh, I sold, I think five Tesla puts for $38,000 and it was 10 points below the strike. I sold them for like $67 each. So that got me my free Ford Bronco. And I was I was completely willing to own Tesla at 750, but by selling those puts, my effective price was way down in the 600s, okay, because they were $77 uh, puts, and I was basically it, it actually went down to that 600s uh, range at one point, but I was actually able to just hang in there, and you saw what happened yesterday. Tesla okay, so. Up. So Dave, to be clear, Dave is potentially interested in the Ford Bronco Sport. I'm getting the Ford Bronco. No, He's I did some more Sport. research. I did some more research. And I think I actually want the Ford Bronco. Oh, all right. So we're the both getting one. the same car? Because it's, it's, it's not that much bigger. Well, we'll see who gets it first. Mine's <laughs> paid for. Elon bought mine for me. Dude, dude, what are you talking about, dude? I said the same thing. I made it. <laughs> Elon bought mine yesterday. Well, I just bought calls. You sold puts. We both got Elon to buy us a Bronco then. But hey, let's just talk about Ford in general. Listen, I know a lot of people don't understand this trade, and I get it. Um, I believe that this summer is going to be an okay-ish summer for car sales. And I think that if we can just get manufacturers producing cars again, 0% interest chart. for 84 months. And by Lowest... the way, this is a Ford chart, and this is the reason I did not do this trade, because Ford, historically, if we if we go way back, Ford is not a company that I want to own, and I only sell puts in companies that I want to own anyway. Are you a technician now all of a sudden? Come no, on. I'm just saying that I think that Ford <laughs> could go to zero, and, and clearly the rest of the market does too. It, it's well, of going course. I don't, when do we care about the rest <laughs> of the market? What, is, what does the rest of the market know? The rest of the market knows nothing. <laughs> they know nothing. Wall Street as knows a, nothing. As a prediction engine for the future, the, the market does know something, though. No, nah, I disagree. I think they know nothing. <laughs> All right, listen. This is a highly speculative trade for me. It's by no means high conviction, but... Um, I think that we're going to have a period in the next three to four weeks when a big part of the country does get back to attempting to live life again, certainly here in Texas, where Ford has quite a lot of sales. If they allow their, 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 their employees to start manufacturing cars again, uh, I think they're going to sell them because they're going to have 0% 84, uh, 84 month financing. I think it's going to be relatively strong this summer. I think Ford's going to have an okay summer, not a good summer, but an okay, kind of a junky summer. But even that will be enough to lift Ford at least back into like six, seven, maybe even eight bucks a share, maybe, right? And that would be a 50% move upwards from where it is today. So I like the risk reward on Ford that has been beaten down and still no one likes it. I get no one likes it. They have I the money to survive this summer. I like that risk reward. I didn't like it enough to actually do it. So I took a way more volatile. I couldn't do this, the options with Ford because there's no premium because Ford isn't as volatile. I was able to get $70 for put options that expired in two and a half weeks. Whatever. And so, 
I have, so for, I have for minimal risk and in a stock that I would have loved to own in the 650s, which is what would have been my effective price. It was trading at 670. I could have gotten it at 650. That's what I wanted to do. That should have been a whole episode of Hey There, Dave here. And I actually started writing out a little script for it, but it was it got too complicated too fast. So are you still talking about Tesla or Ford now? You're talking about Tesla. He's talking about, the I'm Tesla talking about Tesla puts that he sold. Yeah. So I didn't right. do the Ford puts because there wasn't enough premium, right? No, I get so it. I had to I do Tesla. I get oh, it. I get it. Well, Apple, Apple is starting now. Are you guys ready? Uh, kind of. They're going to talk junk for the first five minutes. Um, let's see. Anyway, listen. They're going straight to questions. They're going straight oh, to questions. Oh, yeah. Let's Good do it. Oh, thank you. This is awesome. Us. Let's do it. Speaking first today is Apple CEO Tim Cook. Oh, and he'll no. be followed by CFO Luca Maestri. We, we have opening that, comments. We'll open we thought it was going to be. From All right, we'll listen to Tim Please for a second. That some of the it, it sounded like it was going to be questions, but uh, now they're introducing Tim Cook. Statements, including and telling us about forward-looking statements. Those regarding revenue, gross margin, operating expenses, other income and By the way, Dave, taxes, Ford's not running out of money this summer, not even close. They're outlook, fine. Including the so the big question is, will people get back to you know, life to some extent? Operations. Actual results or trends could differ materially from our forecast. For more information, please refer to the risk factors discussed in Apple's most recently filed periodic reports on form Brian Cruz, Jordan's a pickup Q, guy, not a not an SUV guy. Filed with the SEC he, he, today, and he hates Ford as a company. He hates Ford as a Apple brand. They they, no they screwed him on his last pickup truck. Forward looking I had a bad Ford experience. Information <laughs> which speak as of their respective dates. So now I'm GM. I'd now like to turn the call the over to Tim for introductory remarks. Hey, Ford owes okay, half a billion dollars. Hey, here's, here's Tim, guys. Tim's talking. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you're staying safe and well. Today, Apple reports $58.3 billion in revenue, an all-time record for services, and a quarterly record for wearables, home, and accessories. It was also a quarterly revenue record for Apple retail, powered by phenomenal growth in our online store. Amid the most challenging global environment in which we've ever operated our business, we're proud to say that Apple grew during the quarter. But before we dive more deeply into the numbers, I want to speak just for a bit on COVID-19. This is something Apple has been contending with since January, and I think that how we have responded, what we have been inspired to do, tells an important story about Apple's great durability as a business and the enduring importance of our products and our customers' lives. It also speaks to Apple's unmatched capacity to be creative to think always in terms of the long term and to forge ahead when others may feel an instinct to pull back. Before COVID-19 was on the horizon, we anticipated that Q2 was going to be a prolific and energetic period for Apple. And when the pandemic did strike, our teams not only succeeded in growing the business, in introducing powerful new products, and in meeting our customers' needs, but they also rose to the occasion in terms of meeting our broader obligations to the communities in which we live and work. Let's look quickly across the business. At the same time that they were leaving no stone unturned to get our mm -hmm. latest generation of devices manufactured and into our customers' hands, our worldwide network of supply chain partners, logistics and operations folks in every part of the company were also sourcing more than 30 million masks for frontline medical workers ensuring they're donated to places of greatest need in every region around the world. While our product teams were preparing to launch a new iPad Pro, Magic Keyboard, MacBook Air, and the new iPhone SE, all of which have been very well received by reviewers and consumers alike, they were also working with our suppliers to design, test, manufacture, and distribute more than seven and a half million face shields and we continue to ship more than 1 million of these every week to the doctors, nurses, and medical personnel on the front lines. In a quarter where our services teams achieved strong growth, which Luca will dig into in a minute, and which speaks to the real durability of our services strategy, these teams were also putting COVID-19 front and center. As Apple News reached 125 million monthly active users, we elevated trusted information from reliable sources 
through a special COVID-19 vertical. We let customers skip payments without incurring interest on Apple Card for March and April in light of financial hardship for many families. We worked with everyone from Oprah to Lady Gaga to inform, entertain, and give back through Apple TV. And services like FaceTime and Messages set new all-time records for daily volume during this quarter as users relied on their devices to stay connected into, in a new reality. In software, at the same time that our teams work with great creativity and excitement as we prepare to deliver our first ever all online worldwide developers conference later this quarter, they also worked with the same creativity and speed to put together our COVID-19 symptom checking website and app in partnership with the CDC. As of today, the app has been installed nearly 2 million times and the web tool has received over 3 million unique visits. And just this month, to accelerate contact tracing, we are launching a joint effort with Google to enable the use of Bluetooth technology to help governments and health agencies spread the, reduce the spread of the virus with user privacy and security central to the design. We paired these programmatic efforts with a broader strategy to give back where it's needed most. We've made major corporate donations to response efforts around the world to support global citizen, as well as a new fund for Americans experiencing food insecurity as a result of the crisis. When you tally these things up and consider our ongoing two to one match for employee donations, Apple's contributions to the global response are significant diverse, and a great source of pride for the whole team. We're also doing what we can to help our employees, their families, and by extension, their communities stay safe and well by modifying our operations where appropriate. This extends, of course, to our retail employees. They are Apple's face to our customers and an instrumental part of our business, and we're compensating them normally despite store closures. During a quarter, where circumstances evolved by the hour, we have been gratified by the resilience and adaptability of our global supply chain. While we felt some temporary supply constraints in February, our operations team, suppliers, and manufacturing partners have been safely returning to work and production was back at typical levels toward the end of March. At this time of social distance, of shuttered schools and gathering places, of delayed plans and new ways of socializing, we have seen significant evidence that our products have taken a renewed importance for our customers. Teachers and students around the world are relying on, on our technology to teach, learn, and stay connected with each other. We are in the process of deploying major orders of iPads <clears throat> to school systems working to keep learning going strong at a distance including tens of thousands in Ontario, Canada, Glasgow, Scotland, and Puerto Rico, 100,000 to the city of Los Angeles, and 350,000 to New York City, our largest educational iPad deployment ever. Since early March, we've seen unprecedented demand for our pro apps from students, enthusiasts, and creative professionals. These folks are keeping us all entertained and inspired as we stay at home, and to help them do it, we made Final Cut Pro 10 and Logic Pro 10 available for free for 90 days for everyone. And the reaction has been overwhelming, driving software downloads and usage to record levels. And doctors and medical professionals are making even greater use of Apple Watch and other health features to communicate with patients and to treat them safely from a distance when necessary. With new FDA guidance on non-invasive remote patient monitoring, for example, the ECG app on Apple Watch is increasingly being used to facilitate remote ECG measurements and recordings for telemedicine usage, reducing patient and healthcare provider contact and exposure. Many hospitals, such as Geisinger Health System, NYU Langone Health, and Stanford Healthcare are using apps on iPad and iPhone to support communication and video conferences between hospitalized patients and their care teams. This enables the care teams to keep a close watch on patients without entering isolation rooms, which helps to minimize exposure and reduces some of the need for personal protective equipment. Now, when you step back 
and tally all this up, when you consider all the ways COVID-19 has touched Apple, our customers, and the way we work, this may not have been the quarter it could have been absent this pandemic, but I don't think I can recall a quarter where I've been prouder of what we do or how we do it. As I said at the outset, we achieved revenue of $58.3 billion, and underneath that was product revenue of $45 billion. The performance of our product business had three very different phases during the March quarter. Based on Apple's performance during the first five weeks of the quarter, we were confident we were headed toward a record second quarter at the very high end of our expectations. In the next five weeks of the quarter, as COVID-19 started impacting China, iPhone supply was temporarily affected, as well as demand for our products within China. This caused us to withdraw our revenue guidance in February. At that point, demand for our products outside of China was still strong and in line with our expectations. During the last three weeks of the quarter, as the virus spread globally and social distancing measures were put in place worldwide, including the closure of all our retail stores outside of greater China on March 13th and many channel partner points of sales around the world, we saw downward pressure on demand, particularly for iPhone and wearables. Given the lack of visibility and, and certainty in the near term, we will not be issuing guidance for the coming quarter. Over the long term, though, we have a high degree of confidence in the enduring strength of our business. Our global supply chain is profoundly durable and resilient. We have shown the consistent ability to meet and manage temporary supply challenges like those caused by COVID-19. We have continued to deliver innovative new products across multiple categories that appeal to a broad cross-section of customers, including the all-new iPhone SE, which achieved unmatched technological capacity at an incredible value. Our teams worldwide have tackled the complexities of this moment with unmatched creativity, good humor, and dedication to our customers. For a company whose business is innovation, there are real upsides in periodically having to figure out how to do just about everything in a brand new way. Our long running investment in our services strategy is succeeding. This business is growing and is a reflection of our enduring, large, and growing install base. We expect to meet our long-standing goal of doubling our fiscal 2016 services revenue in 2020. We have always run Apple for the long term. We entered this period with unmatched financial strength, a robust cash position, and our best product pipeline ever. Major investments, including our five-year commitment to contribute $350 billion to the economy here in the United States, are moving forward full speed ahead. It's in these moments that we set ourselves apart. We've always managed through difficult moments by doubling down and investing in the next generation of innovation. And that's our strategy today. And so while we can't say for sure how many chapters are in this book, we can have confidence that the ending will be a good one. Apple will continue to do everything we can do to help the global response and to keep our customers learning, creating, sharing, and connecting so that life can remain as normal as it can during this challenging time. With that, I'll hand things off to Luca. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon, everyone. It has been a very different quarter than we were expecting when we last talked to you at the end of January. But we could not be more proud of our Apple teams around the world, our role in supporting local communities and our partners, throughout the value chain and how resilient our business and financial performance has hey, been Dave. during these challenging times. So the revenue for the quarter was 58. Uh, yeah, I don't need to hear him talking about the numbers, but uh, that's kind of a he's, little. He's basically going to read to us the numbers that we've already seen and we've already been talking about revenue. <laughs> yeah, he, here's my concern, okay? And it's not like a huge concern long term, but a short-term concern. Our data was really strong, as you know, when it came to MacBooks and, and iPads. iPads. iPads, Not necessarily all that strong when it came to iPhone, of course. 
um, or wearables, like he's saying. So it, everything he's yep. saying kind of lines up with the data we've been tracking. Uh, it is somewhat of a concern. It sounds like we're going to have a fairly weak quarter here. And I think the market's going to pick up on that, honestly. Uh, right? I mean, they're going to pick up on that. Like, I, I, I don't know what the market's going to be wanting to own a ton of Apple for the next 60 days, 90 days. But on the other hand, we still have the big cycle coming in later this year. You know, we still have our 5G cycle. So it's one of those things where it's really hard to make a decision. Do I, do I keep a really big position in Apple now and let it ride to what I think should be a really strong cycle going into the end of the year or, you know, lay off a little bit right now? Like, what do you think? Well, for me, Apple is a company that is going to have revenue slow down. They've they've said that it has already slowed down. They've pulled their guidance for next quarter. They're not. I I don't think that it's going to be amazing for Apple, but Apple's a company that will survive. It has that. It it has plenty of cash, and I think that they they're the right technology company for me. I'm not. But what? I'm not, but, but you're talking about long. Like what I want to know. Like all I care about is. Can I buy them cheaper in the 60 days? That's all. Of course, we all want to know own Apple long term, but can I buy them I cheaper don't, in 60 days? From I don't see it going down. I see what we've what we've seen here, and and after hours, it reacted. There are people with access to trade, and they've decided that Apple is now worth 289. Where yeah. at the end of the day today, they thought it was worth 293. Okay, okay. So, so you're saying that you think based on the relative balance sheet, I think relative balance sheet strength that Apple has, obviously, if you look forward even six months, uh, we have the beginning of our 5G cycle that everyone's been waiting for, right? Um, yes. So relative to the rest of the market, it seems fairly valued. Honestly, I'm not like super excited to have Apple here right now. But I have money to be invested in. I think they're, you know, whatever. I'm not excited about it. That's all I'm saying. It's fine. I'll be in Apple here for the 5G cycle. But it's I'm, I'm not going to even think about Apple for the next five months because I just don't And I care. think that's actually probably good advice because I don't think that Apple is going to do anything remarkable. I don't think it's going down. If I thought it was going down, I would definitely sell it so that I could buy it cheaper. Well, is just, there any – if you run I think scenarios – there could be a temporary time that it that – it, there's well, here's the deal. I mean, I own Apple. You know, all of my Apple I own under two hundred dollars. So there's no way I'm going to sell any of that stuff. But I wouldn't mind seeing a little pullback here if we get down below two fifty. Jordan, when you I say might, that, I might pile more back in. When you say that, I'm assuming you're only making that comment because you know better because of taxes. Is that right? Because Not necessarily, I, no, I want, to, I want to be in Apple long term. No, no, no. The, the fact that you just mentioned that you were in it under two, it doesn't matter if you bought Apple at $5 yeah. or if you bought it at 280 That You have no Apple right now. You have zero Apple share. Taxes aside, you know that. You have zero Apple. Are you putting cash into Apple? Right? If you stay in Apple tomorrow, it means that you're putting new cash in right now at 290 Whatever yeah, so it the, it's the tax thing, right? I'm not going to I'm not gonna sell right. right now. And, uh, but when I go, what, am I going to go rush out and spend... 288 bucks a share tomorrow. I'm not going to do that. Oh, but so it's it's a tax decision for you. It's a tax decision. Yeah. Okay. Hey, taxes aside, because I think most of the shares that I have in Apple are over a year old, so it's yeah. it's kind of irrelevant. Um, I like Apple. I might actually buy more if I if I am I just looking at my portfolio. Like, there's things that I would get rid of that I like Apple better than, and I think even at this price, 293. I pulled up a, a longer term chart. Apple is a solid company. Apple will be selling a ton of iPhones. Apple will benefit from 5G. Apple does have the iPad sales that I think are going to just continue to be phenomenal because that iPad Pro with the keyboard that you just got, Chris, and that I have ordered. Because I, <laughs> nice. I ordered, so I ordered, I ordered the iPad Mini and it was too small. I ordered the iPad Regular. It was eh, not. It didn't have the cool keyboard, so yeah. I'm, I'm now buying my third iPad. In the nice. Past nice. Year. Hey, listen, here's the thing. I will not invest. Everyone knows this. I will not invest in anything unless I think there is some edge in that investment. Um, I, I'm feeling right now I don't have a lot of edge 
in my Apple trade, uh, other than the fact that people, I think, are not giving the same attention to 5G as they would have minus the pandemic, right? So I think if we weren't in the pandemic, I think the 5G cycle being five months before it hits, six months, whatever it is, would yeah. be so strong right now, I could easily see Apple at 360, 370. I know it seems insane, but I see it there. Um, so I'm gonna probably keep most of my Apple, maybe not all of it, I'm going to keep most of my Apple. You're contradicting off. yourself. You you say you only invest in things where you have an edge, and you don't have an edge in Apple, so you should I sell just, Apple. I just, I just explained like it Apple, to you. My I edge just, is that Apple is better than the other companies. No, I just told you the edge. The edge, <laughs> it's not a huge edge. The edge is that I feel that the market is, 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 uh, uh, they are, unfocused on 5G right now because of what's going on with the pandemic. 5G is not getting any buzz. Um, we're not thinking about it clearly. I think, you know, 5G, I've been talking about it for two and a half years, okay? And I always want to be an Apple leading up into 5G, which is why I kind of poured into it last year. Uh, and now we got this nice little break, right, that we got to put money into Apple. Listen, guys, yeah. we put money into Apple. I was putting money into Apple 230 here. I got it almost at the lows when I piled in, 230, 240. Um, and so I am more than happy to stay with Apple through the 5G cycle because I think there's still more hype coming in post-pandemic on 5G. It's just a matter of when, not if. And I think the market is distracted. That's the word I'm looking for. They're distracted because of the pandemic and not giving 5G the attention it deserves. That's my edge. You could agree or not agree, but that's why I'm sticking with Apple, but maybe not as heavy. Dave, I'm really heavy right now. I have like 7,000 shares of Apple. It's a lot for me. That is so a lot. I'll, I'll probably carve that down to, let's call it, you know, four or 5,000 shares of Apple. And I'll probably hold that through the next 12 months, through what I think is going to be uh, a hype cycle, a delayed, a delayed hype cycle on 5G that I think the market is distracted and not appreciating right now. So that's that's me. That's why I'm staying with Apple, but maybe slightly smaller than I am right now. Let's look at a few comments here. Uh, Michael says 5G doesn't benefit consumers directly all, uh, enough to justify picking up a new phone just for 5G. Uh, Epic Score says less people are buying Apple phones every year. Samsung sells 70% of their smartphones. Apple is not as strong as people believe. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not so sure. I do. I, I agree with either of those statements. Um, I think 5G. You you know you might not think about you know right at this moment uh, the advantages to 5G might not be as big of a deal to you. Um, but the way that Apple I think is going to market and Samsung, not just Apple by the way, it's going to be yeah. a massive marketing on 5G. Now the 5G might or might not live up to the hype, but let me set, tell you this. 4K televisions, when they first came out, and even until very recently, had virtually no programming that took advantage of the 4K, okay? Did yep. that keep yep. people from going crazy buying 4K TVs? No, it did not. It, it's all about consumer perception. And what 5G can do for you, you might not have the, gr the greatest 5G in the area that you live in, but the hype cycle, I think, is going to be fairly substantial in terms of what it can do for you downloading a movie in, you know, like in next to nothing, right? Like a minute or two. So I think 5G is going to be a pretty big hype cycle. I don't even think I'm going to stick with Apple through the 5G cycle. I'm going to be investing in Apple going into the cycle, right? Going into the cycle. The cycle is really not going to really hit till mid next year, late next year. Um, but just that initial pop of people of excitement around it. Yeah, and I, I checked the local carriers. We're in a big city. You would think that we would have 5G. We don't have it on AT&T. We don't have it on Verizon. Um, the, the markets that it's rolling out in, it's 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 a slow rollout. So even if I did buy the new phone with the latest 5G, I'm not going to have it in my city for a while. And we're you know, in the top 10 as far as a uh, number yeah. of people in a concentrated area. Let me tell you how excited um, I am about 5G. I don't even own a 4K TV yet. Neither do I. Yeah. Neither do I. 
Um, but I will get, I will probably, I get, I get a new iPhone every year. So I'm a, I'm a bad example. I'm obviously getting a new iPhone, but I, I'll end up breaking my phone and then I'll get a 5g phone just because that's what it comes with. But that's the only reason I'll get it. And, and guys, remember, this is not just about us anymore with Apple. Okay. It's not about, you know, don't, I agree. Us is important, but it's not just about us. 5g is a really big deal globally. And a lot of the other countries are accelerating with 5G quicker than we are here in the U.S. Um, I think it's going to be a really big deal for Apple. We'll see. I'm, like I said, I'm going to I'm going to cut my position some, but I'll, I'll be sticking with Apple long term. I mean, it's no. Like we're, we're about four minutes away from the uh, Amazon call, the, the thing we've all actually tuned in today to watch or listen to. Um, so hopefully, we'll be able to. Uh, hear some good questions from the analysts because yesterday we were or two days ago we were very disappointed with the questions being asked and we really should be on these calls ourselves yeah i i they should just let me ask all the questions on these analyst calls <laughs> uh but that that's never going to happen um all right so i think like i'm good with apple you guys good with apple like i i know where i stand it's fine i mean they've come down pretty hard after hours considering where they were but we're not going to complain about Apple. We're, we're, we've done so well in it. Um, Let me look once again just at this after hours chart to see if anything has happened. You saw, you know, this is Apple running up at the end of the day, and then this is after hours, you know, just kind of right back to where they were. Here's here's a little bit broader view of the five day. And Danny H, yes, I own a Peloton, and I did fix the hole in my wall in the closet. <laughs> our our <laughs> yes, breaking the safe earlier. episode. Yeah, he asked that earlier. Yeah, guys, if you haven't seen our safe, breaking the safe episode that was a mystery in Jordan's wall. You got to watch it on the primary Dumb Money channel, YouTube channel. I patched it same day, same day patch. It is. That was so much fun, guys. Uh, Amazon's tr it's, it's trading down a little, guys. I mean, it's trading down more than it was before. It doesn't make me super happy unless it trades down a lot. I mean, if it's going to go down, let's go down a lot and get those puts to kick in. Um, my puts you never not. know what Jeff Bezos is going to say. That's yeah. That's the uh, wild card here. Let me uh, show you the. Dave, after I, hours I chart hate it. Here. I hate it. This is the worst level for me. I, I'm getting killed. You know, my <laughs> calls are are cut by seventy percent at that level. My puts are virtually worthless at that level. It's a bad level. That's a that level is minus a hundred thousand dollars for me. Ouch. I I need it to go up or down up or down from that level. So let's hope something happens on this call. To I need to go down like another 150 points or go up 50 points. Is that fair? It's not too much that to ask for? No, that's... So does that's it have to trade in, in the absolute worst possible area for me? Like the <clears> absolute... <throat> could it be in a... I don't think it could be in a worse... It would be. So, if it's 20 no, points it's, it's lower, the worst possible range because you, you literally have to... No. There's a worse range. You know what the worst range is, Dave? Twenty three hundred even, where my <laughs> my calls would be zeroed out. Nothing. Everything like, expires worthless. Twenty three hundred. Oh, watch yeah. it trade there. I deserve this with all the luck I've had the last six weeks. I deserve for this thing to be pinned at twenty three hundred tomorrow. I don't. I don't wish anything bad for you. I'm hoping that that you do well. Oh. So we're now hearing the Amazon conference call music, so we know that we're. We're in the right place, on the right channel, and you guys are on the right channel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you should really do that. We talk about stocks at least twice a week, and we do it live, and we show you our real trades and all of that good stuff. So please subscribe. We'll be uh, bringing you this Amazon uh, earnings call. This is the one that we have $10 million wrapped up in, Chris and I. Jordan has 300 shares. Or 150 shares or something. And he's not, you know what though? He's Does, considering you, tripling down and, and getting. But, but, but do you see any anxiety coming from Jordan right now? Zero. He he's is the most relaxed. chill dude. Yeah, absolutely. He, he, he's fun. He's like, nothing could happen with Amazon that's going to ruin his night. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. He has it all figured out. It's a good place or to do be. Or do I? You guys have made a lot more money <laughs> in the last few weeks than I have, but. Yeah, he hasn't been celebrating as hard as we have the last few weeks, but tonight... I'm getting pretty close to being even on this whole pandemic. So what do you think we're going to hear? You know, obviously we'll hear the beginning of this call. They're going to have a lot of things to say about how 
con concerned and sincere they are and all of those kind of things. But what kind I'll, of meat are we going to get from this conference call? I'll tell you what meat I want. I want Bezos to kind of tell us, yes, he's going to do spend $4 billion, but hint, hint, Thank we're you. killing it. I want him to like be like, you know what I'm saying? Like hint for the future. Like I just want him to give that little like between the lines, right? Yeah, I want that. Time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the presentation, we will conduct a question and an and answer. And session. I also want him to hint being recorded that he's sandbagging next quarter. That's what I want. That's all I want to That's hear. That's all so I want. We are, we are holding back because we know we have to. Yeah. Yeah. So, so guys, Hello, all I'm looking for is that they're sandbagging. That's it. Financial results conference call. Joining us today to answer your questions are Brian Olsofsky, our CFO, and Dave Files, Director of Investor Relations. As you listen to today's conference call, we Jeff's encourage you to have today. our press release in front of you, what? which includes our financial it's not, it's not results, abnormal. as well as metrics and commentary on the quarter. I was just Please thinking. Know, I thought he would today, though. I did too. All comparisons in this call will be. It's kind of like you know, Steve Jobs used to do that. He would kind of come on every once in a while. Yeah, and just, just for important ones. Yeah. To your questions reflect management's views as of today, April thirtieth, two thousand twenty only, and will include forward-looking statements. Actual results may differ materially. Additional information about factors that could potentially impact our financial results is included in today's press release and our filings with the SEC, including our most recent annual report on Form 10-K and subsequent filings. During this call, we may discuss certain non-GAAP financial measures. In our press release, slides accompanying this webcast and our filings with the SEC, each of which is posted on our IR website, you will find additional <laughs> disclosures regarding these non-GAAP measures including reconciliations of these measures with comparable... By the way, guys, Jordan, Dave, yeah. the headline on CNBC is exactly what Bezos wanted. Amazon reports earnings, plans to spend all Q2 profits on the pandemic response, right? And we talked about that. We talked about the, that before this call. And before, before the earnings, we said that he's going to try to do something PR-wise and spend a, a crazy amount of money and the various factors detailed in our finance. And that hurts us as investors, but this he doesn't care. He's building company for the future and he's building the, the company that will survive the next 50 years, 100 years. But it's all political too, because he's not spending that money on the pandemic. It's not what he's spending the money on. I'm sorry, it's not. No, he's Some spending of it, it is. towards efforts that will be affected by the pandemic. Jordan, how do you spend $4 billion on sanitation and, you know, I get there's higher salaries in the hundreds of millions for the quarter, not in the billions. Those latex gloves are pretty expensive. <laughs> I'm ordering them on Amazon right now. Like, two, I get 700 for like 20 bucks. So don't tell me, Bezos, that you're spending $4 billion on this pandemic. You know that, you know that $4 billion includes the, uh, the new employees, all the, the whole bit. The employees are hundreds of millions, not billions for the quarter. Yeah, but it's just part, it's part of the whole, it's part of the whole package. That we Such a dog. Dude, he really is. All right, investments, here. restructurings, or legal settlements. It's not possible to accurately predict. The is this all still dis services, disclosures? And therefore, our actual this results differ materially. <laughs> they're they're still, uh, actual they're results. And now I mean, they're just reading. Brian. Oh, now here, here's Before something. Before we real. move on to the Q and I'd like to lead off with a few comments. What we've all seen transpire in the past two months has been gut wrenching and unprecedented. But it has also been a time of heroic action by healthcare workers, government officials, police and emergency personnel, and all essential workers in our communities. This includes frontline Amazonians, including our Whole Foods team and our partners around the world. They've provided a lifeline of groceries and other critical supplies to the doorsteps of all of us at this critical time. I'd like to give you some insight into what we have seen in Amazon and how we are responding to this crisis. Beginning in early March, we experienced a major surge in customer demand, particularly for household staples and other essential products across categories such as health and personal care, groceries, and even home office supplies. At the same time, we saw lower demand for discretionary items such as apparel, shoes, and wireless products. This large demand spike created major challenges in our operations network and with our seller community and our suppliers. 
Well, we generally have experience in getting ready for spikes in demand for known events like the holiday season and Prime Day. We also generally spend months ramping up for these periods. The COVID crisis allowed for no such preparation. We took quick action to react to the higher order levels while continuing to provide for the safety of our workforce. We established rigorous safety and cleaning protocols, including maintaining six foot social distancing, procuring 100 million masks, tens of millions of gloves and wipes and other cleaning supplies. We began requiring temperature checks across our operations network. In our Whole Foods stores, we added plexiglass barriers between cashiers and customers and reserved special hours for senior customers to shop. We temporarily raised wages and overtime premiums. We funded a new Amazon relief fund and we allowed employees to take unpaid time off at their discretion. To deal with the unprecedented demand, we hired an additional 175,000 new employees, many of whom were displaced from other jobs in the economy. We took steps to dampen demand for non-essential products, including reducing our marketing spend. Our network pivoted to shipping priority products within one to four days and extending promises on non-priority items. Our independent third-party sellers most of whom are small and medium-sized businesses, work tremendously hard to serve our customers, and we are grateful for their efforts. Third-party sellers continue to see strong growth in our stores as more than half our units sold are from third-party sellers. We increased grocery delivery capacity by more than 60% and expanded in-store pickup at Whole Foods stores from, over, uh, from 80 stores to more than 150 stores. And other Amazon teams shifted their focus to directly helping customers in the overall effort to fight the COVID virus. AWS has created Data Lake to assist healthcare workers, researchers, scientists, and public health officials who are working to understand and fight the coronavirus. Many of our AWS products are helping in the government response to the crisis and are there for customers who are seeing their own demand spikes, companies enabling video conferencing, remote learning, and online health services, for example. Amazon Flex is supporting food banks by donating delivery services of groceries to serve 6 million meals in Los Angeles, Miami, Nashville, Orlando, San Francisco, Seattle, and Washington, D.C., with plans to ramp this up to 25 cities across the U.S. And Alexa is helping customers access important CDC guidance and help them evaluate their own COVID-19 risk levels. How is all this impacting our business? While customer demand remains high, the incremental revenue we are seeing on many of the lower ASP essential products is basically coming at cost. We've invested more than $600 million in COVID-related costs in Q1 and expect these costs could grow to $4 billion or more in Q2. These include productivity headwinds in our facilities as we provide for social distancing and allow for the ramp up of new employees, investments in personal protective equipment for employees, enhanced cleaning of our facilities, higher wages for our hourly teams, and hundreds of millions of dollars to develop COVID-19 testing capabilities. In Q1, we also had another $400 million of costs related to increased reserves for doubtful accounts. On the flip side, we did see a drop in travel, entertainment, and meeting costs, as well as lower market as a way to dampen our demand for non-essential items. While we can't have great certainty about what the next few quarters will look like, I'm humbled by the efforts of my fellow Amazonians in delivering essential goods and services to so many people. We take this responsibility seriously and we're proud of the work our teams are doing to help customers through this difficult time. With that, let's open up for questions. At this time, we will open the call up for questions. We ask each caller, please limit yourself to one question. If you would like to ask a question, please press star one on your keypad. We ask that when you pose your question, you pick up your handset to provide optimum sound quality. Once again, to initiate a question, please press star then one on your touchtone telephone at this time. Please hold while we poll for questions. Dead air. I feel your like I need to question, say something. Question line of <laughs> Doug Amuth with JP Morgan. Please proceed with your question. Great. Thanks for taking the question. Um, first, I just wanted to ask, uh, within the $4 billion of COVID-related incremental costs in 2Q, um, you talk about spending hundreds of millions on your own testing capabilities. 
Can you just talk about the strategic thinking there mm -hmm. underlying trying to build this in-house versus sourcing from elsewhere? Uh, and does this potentially take you into a new business path over time? Um, and then how do you think about the spending here in 2Q and whether over time does that change your margin structure uh, for an extended period of time uh, beyond just the next quarter? Thanks. Yeah, sure, Doug. Uh, first on testing. So um, we, we estimate the testing will be about $300 million in Q2 if we're successful. Uh, we've put some of our best people on it. I think everyone is trying to get testing um, not readily available. Uh, on the scale that we needed for to test, um, you know, our our scale of employees. So we are, uh, you know, working to do that ourselves and to build protocols and to and uh, again we'll we'll see how we do that differently. And I I don't know, you know, again about um, future business opportunities. Our main concern is is uh, getting testing in the hands of our employees. Yes. Potentially three hundred million dollars. That's uh, not an investment to test your own employees. No, it's not. You that know, the, makes sense. Uh, a lot of the costs that we're seeing are tied to right, this, right, uh, COVID um, uh, response. Uh, most of it is hitting in uh, people costs, both both in productivity and also in wages and uh, relief funds and all. So um, we can't really tell how long that uh, will last. Um, it's probably good that I'm only giving uh, we're only giving guidance for Q2 at this point. We're going to have probably learn a lot more in the next few weeks, the next few months. Uh, and we'll, we'll continue to update this. But for now, um, you know, most of what we see are uh, uh, temporary costs in the, long, in the scheme of things. Amazon but, home test kits are coming. You know it yeah. is. You know they will. You know they you will. You know it is. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Brian. And I actually think Amazon home test kits would be great, right? Oh yeah, they're not spending three hundred million dollars to test their own employees. That's in anyone to buy that would be insanity. No, but if they have the capacity to test their employees, they probably could just ramp that up and test yeah. the entire world. Network to provide goods for people and the the value of of Prime and, and Amazon to customers. So I guess in light of that, can you talk to us at all about the impact you've seen on the the Prime customer account. From the current situation, we any color about. on how you've been able to expand Prime's reach into new customers or demographics from this. Then the second one, I know there's a lot of changes going on in logistics and things, but Amazon's always a learning company. So any learnings you've had so far on the logistics side about how you actually may be able to learn some new best practices to run more efficiently post-COVID from the current fire that we've been going through? Well, I think we've learned that... Uh, it's easier to get ready for a holiday or for a prime day than it is to get ready for something like this when everything hits at once. Um, high demand and then also a need to restock automatically and not prepare for it. So that's not uh, something that we want to keep learning, but uh, we're doing our best to, to um, you know, maintain and, and uh, you know, provide key services for uh, and essential items for our prime customers and all, and all our Amazon customers. Um, on the... Uh, uh, Prime, uh, excuse me, Prime program. Um, you know what we're seeing is again, uh, we're seeing a lot of pickup in uh, Prime shopping benefits. We see our Prime customers are shopping more often; and they have larger ba basket sizes. We're also seeing a lot uh, more use of our video benefits and our um, digital benefits. So in March, uh, the first-time viewers nearly doubled, um, which is, uh, I think, a good, a good time for people to. to uh, when, when they're a lot of them are uh, staying at home to uh, stay entertained and and um, you know see our video collection, it's it's also beyond uh, kind of Prime Video. It's also our channels and and um, video rentals also went up. As I'm sure uh, others in the entertainment business saw that as well. Um, I think people are finding more benefit from Alexa when they're at home. They're listening to more music, asking questions, particularly questions related to COVID and issues. Um, uh, you know, around it, they're uh, using it in education with their children, um, and you know, I think we're seeing a lot more on the communication side using it, people using uh, Alexa calling and dropping. Answer the question. So I think the, uh, yeah. the Tell us how many story is members. that you know shopping is um, you know more uh, really important for people now, especially when they uh, those people can't leave their houses. 
I think the digital benefits are. He's describing what Prime is and not the question of how many. So dirty. Um, and again, what was the impact on Prime membership was the Prime specific question. Using to use, you know, all of their Prime benefits that maybe they hadn't used as much in the past. He didn't answer it. Nothing. No Great answer at all. Wow. Why don't you follow up with a, could you tell me what it did to Prime and membership? question comes from the line of Mark Mahaney. Wow. We'll get that team. question Please again. Please sure. question. Thanks, too, please. Uh, first, could you talk about where you are in terms of uh, fulfillment efficiencies? I, the way you track it, you know, uh, pre-COVID, Amazon was able to, you know, uh, had some sort of level of standard of meeting um, uh, demand with, you know, within a certain period of time. How low that got given the surge in demand and where you are in terms of the recovery. In other words, when are you going to be, uh, when will, how long will it take for Amazon to get back to a point where, you'd have the same sort of um, service efficiency levels that you, on the retail side that you had pre-COVID. How far are you away from that? And then the second one is, could you talk about the AWS business? And um, I guess I would have expected maybe uh, the, the growth rate's really robust, but maybe even a kick up in the growth rate is, uh, what are you seeing there in terms of, I assume there's much greater usage of AWS now. Is that something that would show up in the P&L maybe on a delayed basis? Um, just talk about what, what what's happening to that side of the business in this crisis. Thank you. Uh, sure. Well, um, you know, we're happy with the growth in Q in Q1 um, on such a large base. Again, we're uh, now it's a $41 billion run rate, um, and that's grown 33% year over year. But what we're seeing kind of post-COVID is um, it varies by industry. I think we, we think um, what uh, is probably where we're uh, a bit well positioned is that we have such a breadth of customers, you know, there's millions of active customers from startups, enterprises, the public sector. So there's a lot of um, variance in, uh, again, in uh, what individual industries are seeing right now. Things like uh, video conferencing, gaming, remote learning, entertainment, all are seeing you know, much higher growth um, and uh, usage. And things like hospitality and travel certainly have contracted uh, very severely, very quickly. So I think there's going to be a mixed bag on yeah, on industries, and of course, this is uh, would be tied to the general economic conditions for the country and the world, quite frankly. So, um, right now, we're we're we want to be there for our customers. We want to be able to scale up when they need us. Um, we want to be there and support them regionally around the world, and uh, you know we've been doing a good job with that, I believe. On the uh, fulfillment efficiency, I think you're Didn't talking about one question. day probably is the heart of your question. When will we get back to no. what we had seen and uh, levels of one day? So a little bit on that. So again, as I mentioned in my introductory comments, we had to uh, to, to kind of absorb this uh, shock of uh, top line demand and also um, the ability to uh, stabilize our operations. But we had to take the step to uh, focus on essential items extend the, sh the shipping uh, period from one to four days and then sh uh, further on uh, non-essential items. I had to restrict things that were coming into the warehouses and focus on essential products. So we think that uh, is still the, uh, was the right course of action. And um, as we add capacity, we're trying to uh, resume more normal operations as far as uh, the shipping of non-essential items and the speeding up of, of uh, one day shipments. Um, I will explain, you know, a bit on the one-day shipping cost because it's, it's aligned with this. So we originally thought we would uh, spend a billion dollars uh, roughly on one-day shipping in Q1. And what we're seeing is um, we pretty much spent about that same amount because it's uh, in, the, in the old days, we would have perhaps, um, you know, had the option to ship things, you know, two-day, three-day, four-day and, and seen a uh, break on rates for the actual shipment. But most of our one-day costs are really what we've done to our logistics networks networks to allow for one-day shipping. Things like putting inventory closer to the customer, things like um, uh, building up our AMZL uh, network and delivery uh, network, and also having multiple pull times and uh, shipping windows during the day. So those are actually coming in. All those things are coming in uh, very handy to us to help uh, get more capacity out of what we currently have, and we're glad we've made that investment, but we don't actually see a savings um, because we're still shipping things once they're available very quickly to customers. So it's really a combination of how long it takes to get things in stock, picked, packed, and shipped. Uh, the shipping is still pretty fast and is, uh, you know, still coming quickly. It's just, it's taking longer to get things uh, 
into our warehouse and out of our warehouse. So that's really the challenge right now is to speed that up. And um, uh, that will, when we do that, we'll see a resumption of uh, more one day service. But uh, right now, you know, things are still so up in the air that I can't really project when that day will be or uh, you know, what point in Q2 or Q3 or beyond. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Your next question comes from the line of Heath Terry with Goldman Sachs. Please proceed with your question. Great, thanks. Um, I did want to dig just a little bit deeper into into your comments on on AWS. Um, you know, yesterday during Microsoft's call, they they mentioned that they had seen two years worth of digital transformation in the cloud in in two months. I, you know, curious if you how you would characterize sort of what you have seen as we've gone into into to August or into April in terms of uh, in terms of cloud adoption and you know what this is what this has meant for AWS and um, the adoption of you know the rate of adoption or acceleration in that in that business maybe more more broadly um, and then you know as we look at the guidance the you know the four billion dollars for expenses in the in the, the second quarter. Um, if we adjust for that, that imply, implies a, a pretty material increase in, in profitability quarter over quarter. Um, in any sense of, or any sense that you can sort of share with us of just what the drivers behind that profitability is, how much of that is is annualizing the one day investments and the efficiencies that you're seeing there um, versus anything else in particular that you would uh, that you would call out. Yeah. So first on AWS, I mean, I, I don't have. Um, uh, comments uh, that you may have heard elsewhere about uh, digital transformation. I think what I would say is, you know, we've continued to see a healthy uh, uh, adoption of our business and healthy usage, uh, not only in the United States, but globally. Um, you know, our backlog of, uh, of um, you know, future contracts continues to build. Um, and, you know, I still think the basic value proposition of AWS um, that, you know, we've always pointed to Things like having the you know largest uh, most functionality, the largest and most vibrant community of customers and partners, you know having really proven operational and security experience, and building you know what customers need in the areas of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and other really key areas is um, uh, has not been impeded by this uh, uh, COVID uh, crisis yet. And yes, we're seeing uh, you know, different performance in different industries, um, but our sales force is still there to help help not only with current capacity, but also the transition to new and um, as people make that journey onto the cloud uh, and then uh, expand their uh, their use of the cloud. Um, on the four billion, or sorry, on the um, Q2 guidance, I think the question is perhaps if, if um, you know, how do we have a range that's above zero if we have $4 billion of cost. Is that pretty much the, essential, the uh, uh, essence of your question? I think there are, um, there are uh, you know, some efficiencies that would leverage that we get on fixed cost on higher volumes, uh, even if they, uh, you know, are somewhat break even on a contribution profit basis. There's, um, you know, there's some uh, improvement in uh, our you know, cost structure when we have high volumes. There's also been a, a resumption of seller volume, especially from uh, third parties using uh, direct shipments to customers uh, as companies are, uh, you get more uh, capability, uh, both in this country and other countries. Uh, we will uh, continue to uh, moderate our marketing in the time period when we have, again, uh, pretty much the demand we are trying to fulfill uh, is there and there's some products that are still out of stock. So it doesn't make sense uh, to, um, uh, to always do marketing, especially variable marketing in those situations. Uh, and we continue to, um, we believe we'll, say, we'll be saving um, travel and entertainment costs through the quarter. That's, you know, in the, uh, I would say in a couple hundred million dollar um, size range is uh, on the cost. So there's a lot of moving parts here, um, but certainly the uh, investment we're making in the, uh, in the, um, COVID response is pretty significant. On the one day, uh, I would remind you that the one day started. Uh, so that, that was tournament. almost an answer for the first time. So how they expect to have more money than the four, spend four billion, make four billion, and still come out ahead. Efficiency. Um, 
And then the other thing that I would just point out uh, is the, I remember the impact of our uh, change in the useful life of our servers, mostly hitting in the AWS business. That was a uh, $800 million benefit year over year in Q1, and that will continue into uh, the rest of the year. Um, and that, that again, is the uh, benefit we're seeing from being able to uh, use our, our uh, server and infrastructure assets for a longer time period. We've been working on the ability to uh, run them longer, and you know, it's a both a hardware and a software challenge. Um, and as we have uh, had success there, uh, operating at scale for over 13 years now, we've been able to uh, extend our useful life for uh, assets, or recognize that we have been uh, extending the life. So that uh, that's a benefit that we've seen. Uh, in Q1, and we'll see the remaining uh, from here on out. Yeah, and excuse me, just to add to that too, it's, I think it's about $800 million or nearly $800 million benefit in the first quarter. We do expect the change to, to decrease as the year progresses, um, um, but keep that in mind. Right. Thank you, Brian. Our next question comes from the line of Eric Sheridan with UBS. Please proceed with your question. Thanks so much uh, for taking the questions. Maybe two if I can. One on the demand of the revenue side. Any difference in behavior you saw in various shelter-in-place geographies across the world, whether it be Europe versus the U.S. or Asia in the U.S. or India in terms of consumer behavior or certain elements of uh, adoption of certain product categories as we went through the, the month of March? Be curious for what differences you saw on a global scale, including on prime adoption. Uh, in response to COVID-19. And one quick one on the cost side of the equation. The, um, the the cost of energy and oil have come down dramatically. Wanted to know if there was any way you would be able hey, to Dave, pull that out. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go here in a minute. This is, uh, he's essentially avoiding every question. I get it, yeah. he's not gonna release. You know, that, that's the problem with being in a company <clears throat> uh, that's run by someone like Tim Cook, not Tim Cook, excuse me, like, like Steve Jobs back in the day or Bezos here, you literally, he's like stuttering. He's, he can't, he can't really say anything. And it's so, I now remember why I hate Amazon conference calls because yeah, he's, got give you nothing. he's got a script. He's got a script of things that he's allowed to talk about. Literally to talk give about. The you CFO nothing. Is, is, is trained to not give yeah. any yeah. answers. It, 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 it's a joke. I really thought Bezos was going to be on the call today. So um, do you know what we're going to have to do? The next, we're just going to have to wait three months and we're going to cover the next elon musk call because you heard what happened last night on that call yeah yeah he was <laughs> ranting about how the lockdowns are fascist and dropping f-bombs and that is entertaining youtube right there oh so. man he he is he's just he wheels off the last 24 hours on twitter okay here's the thing guys uh after hearing this and after kind of i'm Listen, I am absolutely deflated on Amazon right now. Uh, I am going to obviously unwind my options tomorrow. I'm going to pull back on 1,000 of my shares tomorrow. I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to a 1,000 share position in Amazon because I just Amazon's actually been like ticking up during this call. That, uh, I, that, I have no idea why. That, yeah, I, I'm shocked. I, I don't know why either. Honestly, like I tried to short a thousand shares, but it might Ameritrade won't let me to get into what's called a boxed position. Yeah, box the reason short. why I didn't want to sell a thousand shares is because I need to figure out how to sell. And I know there's a way to do this, but I haven't done this in a long time. I want to sell the, the most recent thousand shares I bought, right. not my original thousand Does shares I bought. You can oh, show yeah, it. Yeah, dude. No, no, no. But you can yeah. show it the correct way on your taxes, right? I'm not so sure. I think you have to unwind that then later on because they're going to make those, they're going to report it it's, to the IRS the way that it's set in the account, which is yeah, right now it's on the, automated in the account. Like uh, efficiency, okay. it's, it's set for efficiency. Automation, yeah. Yeah, and, and what it's going to do is when it sees that, it's going to be like, okay, he, this guy has a gain on both of them. Let's sell the ones that would be at the lower tax bracket, right. which is the Amazon I've had since like 300 bucks a share. Yeah. yeah. I would freak out if I had to pay taxes on two thousand, uh, you know, $2 million of right. tax. That, that would literally, that would be insane. 
So I need to figure out how to do that in the morning. I'm probably <clears> going to unwind 1,000 shares of my Amazon only because I – listen, I love it here at 2,400. I'm happy to get out of those shares at 2,400. It's been like a $700,000 run for me. Um, I'm happy I got in those shares of amounts. I think I got them in – Jordan, do you, am I going to get them at 1,500? I don't know. It was Seven, way low. Yeah. It was. It might be a $900,000 move for me over the past yeah. three, four weeks, four weeks. So I'm, I'm going to take – I'm going to sell those. Um because I just, I don't know. If I don't, let me put it this way, I'll buy puts to protect half that position between yeah. now and the, let's call it the next earnings call. I might do that mm. instead. I might yeah. just buy some 90-day puts just to protect it for the next 90 days. It's um, too bad you couldn't do that short sale because that that would be the easiest and least cost way of protecting your uh, your account. And I might be, well, I'm going to call in tomorrow. They might allow me to do it with an as an exception. So... I'm going to figure out how to do that in the morning. I just don't love, uh, I don't love, I, I heard nothing that I love and I, I don't like, unless they're sandbagging, and I think they are. I think they I are. Think they are. I think quiet. they are. And I think next quarter we could see surprising results expecting nothing. They literally have set the expectations on, we're going to spend every dollar we had preparing for the future, right? Pretty much what we predicted they might do. I think that there could be a surprise that yes, they did spend their four billion dollars, but they actually made five billion. Yeah, cor correct. Um, and, and that would be way, a huge surprise. Or they they were able to gain efficiencies, and their actual earnings were better than expected, or something sure, is going to yeah. happen. So I'm staying in Amazon. I you know I have options expiring. I'm going to have to unwind those. But Amazon is is not only a long term hold, but that's something that I'm going to actively be buying some sort of levered thing for next quarter yeah by the way it looks like i got them in the low 1700s um because i got them right there around it was right when you didn't get them jordan and you were like oh my you're gonna wait for it to pop back to 1700 so it's it like right around that time so listen, yeah. it's like that's like a still a seven hundred thousand dollar move and I, I i just i'm fine having taken half off the table i i don't it's, I don't have nothing against Amazon here, but I feel that my edge right now is removed. So I keep that thousand share because I think the long-term vision, I don't think people appreciate the long-term vision as much as we do on Amazon, but yeah. short term- And I think that some of that $4 billion is going to be building things that are going to benefit Amazon for the long-term, right? Of course it will, that of is, course that it is, will. But that's not being- thought about. I think most people are probably thinking, oh, they're just spending all the money they make trying to do yeah. good for society. But they're actually yeah. building infrastructure that is going to benefit them for the next 20 years. They, they are. But listen, I, I don't I don't feel like I have a short-term edge right now. So I don't want to be as heavy as I am in Amazon without the short-term uh, short edge. I do like the edge I think I might have in Peloton. I think Peloton investors are not fully appreciating the um uh the 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 lack of marketing costs this quarter with them yeah. reducing their marketing that we've noticed yeah. um i don't think they're fully appreciating what i think is going to happen which is i think peloton is going to sell every bike they can sell for the rest of the year i don't think this is a one quarter pop i don't think this is a two quarter pop i think this is an all year selling and delivering everything they're able to manufacture and get delivered for the entirety of 2020 with a dramatically decreased marketing budget, which I don't think the market is appreciating. I think that is the edge. Um, I like my Peloton position. I'll probably maybe go a little heavier on that position tomorrow once I kind of remove some chips off the table on Apple and Amazon. Hey, Chris, we just got, I think, our first ever super chat on this channel. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> F Tech Computers just sent forty dollars for us to tell what we think about the uh, how these after-hour market price is going to affect affect tomorrow's open. So right now we're at twenty three sixty two. Where do you th see this thing opening? So uh, it's a great question because it's something that I've been thinking about for so many years. Like how? And thank you, F Tech. Yeah, thank you so much. That's so cool of you. Um, we I, listen. We've seen it both ways. I mean, I've seen aftermarket. And with nothing changing between aftermarket and market open the next day and have the stock open dramatically different from where it was trading aftermarket. 
And that's because there could be a single point fund that just doesn't trade after market. It's, just, it's against their policy yeah. and they're waiting for the next yeah. morning to trade. And you really don't know. You don't know how much of that is going on. And there are such massive movements when it comes to Amazon and funds that if a huge fund decides to kind of level off a little bit in the morning, or if you have two or three of these 50, 60 billion dollar funds that are unloading, you know, could be unloading billion dollar positions tomorrow in Amazon, uh, you could see it go down quite a bit more than it is now. I well, don't you like do, the you should you should just watch it for the first 20 minutes of uh, trading. It's insane. You'll see the prices just it, go all over the place. It, 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 and the ads, because the market makers are the trying to balance out where the orders. To be. And that's where you'll see your highest volumes through like the beginning and the end of the day also. But but if you want to know, listen, there are a lot of people that try to front run <clears throat> the next day and after hours. A lot of the big funds aren't necessarily doing that. And if they are trading after hours, they're trading on black exchanges that you're not even going to really get great, you know, a whole lot of visibility into. Um, now, I think if you want to answer your question, you have to think what is what is someone that's managing who's managing a big Amazon position? What's going through their head? I don't want to say that I'm thinking like a fund manager because I'm anything but a fund manager. But I think if you are a fund manager right now, you're likely not trading on this until market open tomorrow morning. And what are you thinking based on the that QA session, based on the report, right? I think you're probably a little bit a little bit disappointed, don't you? I mean, yeah. I mean the AWS. Listen, I, I'll, let me say this: reading between the lines. That's why we listen to the conference calls. Reading between the lines is everything. It they will make their decisions not based on the data that was released, but a good buy side manager is going to make their decisions based on reading between the lines. What were they avoiding? What I heard in that call is that he really was kind of avoiding the AWS. Didn't you hear that? Was he oh, avoiding yeah. AWS? Yeah, he, was just oh. he was dancing around. He has, he has tap dance shoes on. What else was he avoiding? He was avoiding the, the membership prime, count. The prime, prime yeah. accounts. Prime okay? membership. Yep. So I think there's a high likelihood. Now, we only get to see sell side research. So there could be sell side research that comes out later tonight or tomorrow morning. I think even in the sell side research, they're going to throw out red flags about prime membership, right? I think in addition yep. to that, buy side. They won't tell you what they're thinking, but they're going to see those red flags. Don't you think that, in that they might trade on that tomorrow morning? I think I think you're right. So so like and I also want to address another comment that um, it, there seems to be a lot going on in our comments, and there's someone named No Show Joe who says it's amazing that we don't talk about the criminal investigation on Amazon. Do you know anything about a criminal investigation? The, the only criminal investigation I ever think about, whether it's happening or not, is on Tesla. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. There, no I'm okay. not. I'm not aware of anything, but I'd have to go back. I'm aware. And read the well, I know what you are specifically. It's yeah. yeah. It's, so it's, it's Jordan. You can the, talk about. Yeah, it's the deal where they're using uh, um, uh, like internal metrics to basically pump their own products, right? And so that's. A conflict of interest oh. that could, you know, be some sort of. Uh, and, there could be an investigation. I think there was a senator or a, a house rep that mentioned something on Twitter that they. I do, I do right? remember hearing this in the news now. Yeah, yeah, and and now they evidently have people who said, claimed on the record that they didn't do this, but they actually do it. And I will tell you, I think they do it. And and listen, sure. I love Amazon. But I don't like what they do when it comes to this stuff. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's horrific that they, they have, have these Amazon Basics products that they can. Uh, Dude, yeah. they have access to everyone's data, and there, there's no Chinese wall to separate yeah. that mm -hmm. from the, the the group. I don't believe. I don't buy it. If even they say, I don't believe they have that set up at Amazon, <clears> and I think it's a huge problem. I really think it's a problem for Amazon. So uh, I'm, I I'm, I'm learning that that whatever that uh, super chat was sent in some currency that isn't U.S. dollars, it's and rubies. so it's like fifty cents. It's rubies. <laughs> but uh, that's fine. That's, anyway, that's pretty funny. But but it looks it like someone question, else sent regardless. a five dollar one. So uh, five dollar super chat. Don't send don't, any more, guys. I got I got to go in a second. I got I got to get dinner for the family. But um, uh, what what do they ask? It's a. Uh, Pedro says uh, he's been wearing his Cruiser's Gonna Cruise shirt every day for the Dumb Money live streams. Thank you so much. That is awesome. I, hey. I need to – I wore mine once. I know you wore yours once, yeah. Chris. He says y'all are the best. 
y'all, uh, are you increasing your short position with the SPY close to 300? No, no, no. I, I have. We have basically stopped putting hedges on our total portfolio. We're now in kind of this kind of neutral position where we are long the stock market. We're not really levered anymore. Uh, we're not trying to time the market as much anymore. Now it's more getting back to basics. So, guys, you, our show and what right we now, talk about. Right now, I'm fully long as well. I do, I, you actually still have some shorts. I think the only thing that I have short is uh, Dave & Buster's uh, puts that are worthless now. And uh, my I'm, I'm short five Tesla puts, which is a long position and made my money there, my $38,374 to be able to buy my Ford Bronco. And I don't have any other negatives in my account. No other so short guys, position. So guys, when you agree, I, the way this show is direct, the way where we're headed the next month or two, if you continue to watch us, we are going to get back to normal in terms of stock picking, trying to see where we have an edge on an individual equity. It's a little bit less about us trying to time markets here. At the same time, we are paying very close attention to hospitalization rates. We're closely looking for a second wave. <clears throat> if a second wave pops anywhere in the country, we will immediately get back into our kind of you know hedged uh, SPY positions, trying to sh you know trying to short our portfolio, trying just like we did the first time around in late February yep. when we were a little bit early on all this. But fortunately, better a little early than a little late with how quickly the market moved. Uh, I look forward to doing that. Like more of the stuff we're talking about right now, like with Peloton, right? Like just stuff where we think we might have a little bit of an edge on the market on an individual security. We're not doing any of that big stuff where we're doing a million dollars, millions of dollars and of hedges every day, right? That could change, you know, if if the market environment changes and we need to protect our portfolio again, we will immediately be doing spy puts, you know, shorting the spy, doing all of those things. But right now, I'm I'm thinking, and we were talking about this yesterday, Chris, that the market is has decided that we have we have this vaccine, we have everything seems good, people are starting to go back to normal life. I think we have about a two week period to see how that goes, and then we may be readjusting our portfolios. Um, guys, so you don't just you want some like feet on the street uh, intelligence from Texas because we're about to go, we're about to open up the state tomorrow, partially open it up. I haven't been outside today, but I've had phone calls from people that said it's nuts already. Their, their streets are packed. I think tomorrow is going to be crazy. I, I, people are so naive when it comes to this stuff, and they're so just aggressive, want to get back to life. I think it's too much too soon, personally. But Texans, a lot of Texans, they are ready to go back. They're ready to hit malls when they open up. I mean, that's they, crazy. I'm not going out. I'm staying in. I'm I'm continuing to order on DoorDash, and uh, I think I might try the Grubhub free trial. Me too. Listen, me too. I think Jordan's in the same boat, right, Jordan? But like, yeah. I mean, we've got we've got a we've got a hey, there she is. We've got a daughter that uh that's kind of uh, susceptible to all this stuff, so we're we're hanging pretty tight. We 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 both do. But would you agree? Everything I'm hearing is people are about to go nuts here in Texas. And by the way. That temporarily is really good for the stock market temporarily, right? Now, if we get a second wave of pandemic, <clears throat> it's horrific. And you will see us on air every day if that happens. We'll be talking to you through every move we made, just like we did the first time. We were so ahead of this, guys. We will be ahead of it again if it, dem if, if it demands us taking those positions. And we're watching it closely. But until we see that, I think we might be in for a few weeks of, eh, you know, people getting back to life. You're going to see crowds on TV. If you're not in Texas, you'll see it on you're the news. See it. But you and, saw the crowded beaches, and you and you saw that they're now closing down beaches and state parks again because it got out of control in California. Man, and so it's so funny. You think people want to go to the beach? You think people want to, like, go to the store? Man, don't fight me on cruisers are going to cruise when you let them, okay? You let them, and they're going to cruise. So, yeah, all you guys out there with Royal Caribbean Carnival, you, we might have to wait it out a year. And hopefully they don't go bankrupt. But if we can survive to 2021, I cannot wait to hopefully make a profit on those cruise trades. Yeah. Well, La La Law thinks that I shouldn't buy a Bronco, Bronco, that I should just buy a Tesla. So I might have to do another Tesla trade to get enough money to be able to afford. Because I think I would want the uh, the Model X, the one with the uh, 
the DeLorean the style the, wings. Yeah, that's what I would do. Or I, I don't think I can wait until it, you know, I don't think it's ever going to be made, but the Cybertruck, I would I would totally drive a Cybertruck. Terrible. Truck. Um, guys, <laughs> that's, guys, that's a polarizing position. I'm going to battery end this call because I have a low battery with 4% left. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're not financial advisors. Don't take this as advice. We're just, just for education and entertainment. Your risk factor is, your risk is different from our risk, guys. Literally, don't take our advice. This is about learning how we think. And by the way, we didn't think that great on either of these two trades. I mean, I was technically wrong on Google, technically wrong today on Amazon. And that's fine. Uh, like, it's fine. We're learning as we go. It's been the best six weeks in 32 years. We've made collectively, uh, I think, seven or eight million dollars in the past uh, six, seven weeks on this show. You could have watched the whole thing from the very beginning if you were watching. Um, literally, accounts up eight, almost 80 percent, 75 percent since February 20th. Um, it's been a hell of a ride, but this is a little little bump in the road today with Amazon. That's okay. Uh, stick with us. We'll tell you what we're doing next, right? Yeah, we're going to do it. And I, I think that our next live uh, webcast, I don't think we're going to do one for any other earnings. I don't think we have anything else in our mm. portfolios that are that exciting. Um, so we'll oh, probably be Peloton, back on- Peloton, are you kidding me? We'll have a oh, huge yeah? show yeah, for Peloton. We'll do Peloton. That's, that'll be next week, but I know that we'll also be back on Monday. We've had a lot of requests for various things, including like how to how to trade in a basic market. Like what what, do you, what are we doing next? So we will be addressing all of that in our upcoming episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Gotta get I gotta get the uh, end graphic. Oh. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Please we, uh, smash it. Here's my logo for that. There we go. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're Dumb Money. We will see you on Monday. Mm.